welcome to the Homeboys Live phone in show here on a Monday night, half seven as ever. But we did one on thirty last week, so that doesn't really make any sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, we are back and we're here to cheer everybody up. Well, I don't know, it depends on how depressed you are. I'm kind of still a bit depressed, but uh, we got Barcelona coming up on Wednesday, the biggest, biggest game in a long time, and uh, gonna be quite a battle. I'm, of course, joined by the one and only David Harper. Hello, man. On the banks of the Boyne, keeping watch. For anybody I coming, can't the invaders come for back, anybody coming over the hill, there. he'll be there <laughs> with his moustache and his musket. I don't know about this. If they come, if they come in the next week, I'm over here with a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get a moustache, like the musketeers. Uh, of course, joined by uh, Jason Higgins. Hello, uh. Uh, the one and only Green and White Raider. Ah, uh, should I say? Number one on Amazon Sportsbooks as of today, Paul? Uh, as of Saturday. Saturday. By any means necessary, the one and only number one selling author, Paul Larkin. Good evening. I set you up for a big fanfare there, Paul. I thought you could be going. I didn't know what to take any away from you, Joe. Shoot Chucky or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, here we are on a Monday night. Uh, who's still a wee bit in shock? Uh, me. Me potentially, aye. Two minutes, about two, a minute to go, and we lose two goals. Aye, Dundee United, aye, pretty shocked. But what do you do? It's Dust yourself down, go on. It's unbelievable. Was any, anybody at the game? I was there. Uh, you were at the game? The atmosphere at always looks amazing. I've never been there. Yes, uh, it is. It is for me. Like, I mean, it's such a lovely wee condensed stadium. The noise reverberates around it. But, um, no, nah, I mean, it was, you know, I thought the first half, you know, we'd done reasonably well. I didn't think the tempo was high enough. I thought Scott Brown was immense the first half. Second half, he just kind of, you could tell he was tired. And I think that's probably why we didn't win the game, by not taking him off and putting Kyle. And I think that would have been an ideal replacement. But I um, can't fault the team too much. I mean, we were ground out, you know, we get the great goal, we need to, then Tony Watt puts on it. And, you know, the first goal we drops there and he scores for another. The second goal, we, you know, can't really fault Ambrose. He's, he's got to try and keep that away. And it was a bit of a shocker. Um, but, you know, picture, you know, Miku scored. We did lose two of the defence during the course of the game. Boy, Column seemed determined to book our whole team for some reason, <laughs> um, right. despite the fact Dungate never got a single book in. And of course, as usual, uh, certainly get two bookings for scoring goals. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen last week the Kilmarnock scored a second goal. The guy runs right across the pitch, slides and he, he's off the park. And they're about the Kilmarnock crowd, nothing. Celtic players scored two goals in one of the tightest uh, parks in Scotland, and so they get booked twice. So, uh, aye, disappointed, but you know, no overly deflated. That's the thing that really bothered me as well about that booking, because like, it's one of those places. If you're going at speed, you're going to end up in the crowd anyway. Mm -hmm. You know I mean? Exactly. I mean, it's. I mean, Miku's probably sitting now, one still wondering why he got booked. You yeah. know, the guy's been struggling at Celtic. He wants to get in the team. People have been sort of he had a bad performance last week, etc., etc., etc. He scores a brilliant goal. I mean, what do we want? Do we want him just to walk away and say, "I mean, this is his new move. He's in a new country and all that." He jumps into the crowd. The fans love it, and, and Colin goes away. And I, I should say as well that when Colin walked for the second goal. I, saw, I noticed on the highlights the absolute venom in Colin's face as he booked Tony Watt. You think he just decapitated somebody? You know, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's over exuberance. You know, the guys are happy to score goals, and you know, just because we've not got characters as referees doesn't mean we didn't want them all players. He's a religious but, school teacher, though, so I can kind of see where the arsehole in him comes from. I think to be, <laughs> I think to be fair with the book and the walk, when you when you see that, when I watched, I, mean, I watched the game on the television live, and he and he was actually saying to him, he was actually saying to him, look, what, what are you doing, man? I've just booked somebody for that. You could see him kind of saying that before he showed him the yellow card, but. What's look here and they got a yellow card, man? I mean, take a yellow card for that every time after scoring. I think as well, see, football's about having fun, do you know what I mean? It's, exactly. a, it's an entertainment sport. Something you dream about for you being a kid, scoring a goal, running to your own fans. I mean, where's the bloody harm in it? You know, I know it's the rules. So if they're following the rules, well, some of them sort of want to, want to sort of live by and others sort of take a common sense approach, which I'm all for. But it's, it's an absolute disgrace. It's shocking. As you say, Miku, he struggled a wee bit, to be honest with you. And then what a goal he scored. And mm -hmm. the perfect way of celebrating is just jump into the crowd. And there's nothing better than that. And I'm sure, see, even if the away fans, or sorry, the other, the other uh, supporters, say it's a Dundee United player, and he jumps into the crowd. Are we all want the guy booked? No. 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 You know, you're, you're celebrating with your own fans. I mean, enjoy mm -hmm. yourself. 
You know, it's just it's just madness. I mean, the guys that run the game are needing shot. See for stuff like that, it's just utterly mm. ludicrous. You can understand it when the when they were talking about players running behind the goals and maybe the stickling to allow it that another support or something like that. But not talking about the rain fans and what's the but that's totally different. Ah, but if you're on the back and you're, ah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, the, fair play if you're doing something offensive to the other set of supporters. Aye, really? good, aye. But, but this is just... They're just going to tell you it's for health and safety and so for safety reasons. You know, it, I, don't understand, I understand maybe crowd pushing and stuff like that there. Maybe, right? But people are people are sensible enough, I think, nowadays to know not to do stuff like that. But mm. I think it's maybe also either it's a divide between the players and the fans. That, <clears> for me, that takes away a lot of a lot from the fans, you know what I mean? If you're, yeah. there, if you're there the day somebody jumps into the crowd after their first goal, you're going to remember that for a long, long time. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, this all started, if you remember, in 1997 when Middlesbrough played Liverpool at the new ground and Ravenelli scored a hat-trick for Middlesbrough that day and every celebration he'd done, he pulled his jersey over his head and sponsors started to realise that their logo wasn't getting shown when gold guys were scoring goals, they put pressure on FIFA UEFA to make it a booking offence. And they've pushed it towards this as well, where guys are running the crowd, they're not running about with their advertising logo on. But as you see, I mean, there's such a disconnect between the fans and supporters now anyway, it has been for a few years, with the money aspect and all that kind of thing, that so many guys that all have been in there when Miko jumped into them, and that'll be the highlight of their life. Certainly one of mine, if I've been standing there, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah, definitely. Right, could we get on and talk about the actual football then? Because oh, you better, because they're all in tears. And the, I was going to say, uh, it, it seems like we're kind of avoiding. Um, I suppose the big question <laughs> is... We're in tears in the chat room, because we're talking about bootings. Well, here, listen, count ourselves lucky, it could be pies. Right? <laughs> <laughs> For 45 minutes. Absolutely. So, you, know, I mean, you never know where this show is going to go. Be thankful we're even talking. Um, so, are we just going to talk about the two goals lost at the end, or should we talk about performances overall? I was going to say, we should talk about the, the game. Right, we'll talk about the lineup overall. Let up overall. Harper, you're always good for that. Uh, actually, go to somebody else first. Jesus Christ. I'll, I'll go. But I can't remember what the lineup was right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, Nathan Graham to be on the waves. Did you listen to that? I just love getting folk back now after my 6 2 gaff. <laughs> Why, what happened? What happened? <laughs> just, Miku, we'll leave it at that. Okay. But, uh, no, it's. Celtic, the, the start lineup, we're going to miss Hooper because MD would miss him, he's top class striker. So we've missed Hooper, but the way we lined up, obviously Thomas Rogney, Rogney comes in for Effie Ambrose and he's getting called sick note for now on Rogney. I mean, he misses a sitter in the first half, I mean, an absolute sitter, he puts it by the post and then he goes off with a hamstring, you know, after 20 minutes. I mean, now we have it for another month, and he was the guy that was moaning about a contract at the start of the season. He's just cursed. He's just cursed that lad. I actually think he's not a bad player, to be fair. He's, he's a good, a good young prospect, but this is very, very injury prone, and this is just seems as if he's made of glass. But uh, there you go. So the starting lineup, fair enough. We've got Brown and Yama back in the middle, but uh, we didn't he's see. to see Brown, Jason. I was, but. Especially, like, Neil Lennon played like a full-strength team in the mid- midweek in a cup game at home, you know, and obviously it reflected in the scoreline and the performance. It was fantastic. But uh, he sort of starts and plays Tony Watt up front himself, which is, I don't know, it's, he's, a, he's a great young player, Tony Watt, but I think if you're a forward, you need a partner. and uh, So you're playing him up front himself, but you've got a very, very strong midfield in there, so fair enough, you know, and I'm, I'm not too unhappy. I think we've still got enough. To beat them, but our first half performance was pretty. Like it was not too bad. So we've got Tony Watt should possibly have scored. Chris Commons was unlucky. He took a great first touch in that one. I think the defender got in mm. and go go to in front of him when he was just ready to pull the trigger. And Scott Brown himself with a header in the first half. So that was our three chances to know. Wrong me as well. Wrong me. So, I had a good chance. Aye, the header. I I said that at the start. Yeah, so that's that, four. Yeah. Oh, four. So Brown's header. Uh, Chris Commons is shot and Rogney's header. We got three chances, you know, back in Hanky in the first half. So then the Dundee United had many chances. But then the second half started and Dundee United they see to be fair, Dundee United were actually looking the better team. They they looked more likely to score score the opener. But when Meek came on, he started settling down. I think Tony Watt was playing excellent. I thought he's chased the ball. I liked Azagiri as well. Uh, he was playing well but then obviously he got took off for Miku to come in he sort of injured himself it was a great run he made and that shot he had so hopefully he, has he heard anything is he going to be alright? 
I think it was precautionary, precautionary taking them off rather than you know a, a hamstring tear or anything like that. Like, yeah. So the second half, then the goal Miku scored, world class. He's turned brilliant. Uh, yeah, great through ball for Tony Watt, and then Watt's goal. I mean, does it all himself. The goalie kicks it out to him. He's forty odd yards out. Takes a great sort of puts the defender the wrong way, and woof, what a shot oh, in the power man. Tremendous. And then it was an easy street, and then we just took our foot off the gas. Killed with a sucker punch and big Ambrose, uh, the own goal. But what do you, what do you do? It's just you need. Uh, Tony Mowbray would say you need to take it in the chin. But uh, there's there's this. I mean, the the witch hunt for Paddy McCourt at the end because he went in a run with the ball and lost the ball. I mean, the guy's only on the park for like eight to ten minutes. I mean, he's not getting much game time. I mean, can I blame Paddy McCourt for this? You know, we've got a full defence there. If any of them deal with us. You know, the first goal was a couple of mistakes and then your my Mackay Stevens puts it away well. But if Kelvin Well deals with it right, he's not even getting in and then it's two 0 we win. So folk are blaming Paddy McCourt, I just think that's scapegoat material. But uh ach, got it that we drew, but what do you do? You just need to take a hat. It's always us that does it to other teams, but that's people are saying there's trends there now because we lost in both halves against Barcelona and now against Dundee United. But let's face it. Barcelona, you cannot compare them with anything we're facing in Scotland. This was about a freak, an absolute freak, and that's what I'm putting it down to. I, th- I, th- I can't agree with Paul as well, though. I think that there was a mistake in the substitution, whether it was McCourt or Kyle that came on, but I thought Brown would, should have been the man. Yeah. He, was, he was kind of toiling at that time. Like, and I wouldn't have disagreed. <laughs> Kyle, I would, I would have took Scott Brown off anyway, 0-0, about 65, 70 minutes, because I wanted him to be as fit as he possibly can against Barcelona. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's the type of guy he doesn't want to come off. But uh, nah. I mean, he was ha- he was having a great game in the first yeah. half. I mean, he was pressing high. Um, I mean, you know, Dunyan United offered no threat whatsoever until Rodney went off, and then they took the chance, pushed Daly up front. I mean, the very fact that Rodney was in the team, I think, was to combat Daly. You know, because he is good in the air. But Brown was pushing them back all the time. He's one of the boys passing it and that kind of thing. But Harper sees and Jason as well. You know, by about 60 minutes, you could see he was tiring. And, uh, you know, no wonder, you know what I mean? A couple of games and that. And it, it was just kind of like you could see the, around that people sort of saying, you know, I've got to take him off now, I've got to take him off. Because we were falling out the game. But as Jason says, as soon as Miku came on, that just lifted everybody for 10 minutes. And it was that 10 minutes that we'd done the damage. And then they say it was it was just a bit of a freak. I, did, I couldn't see Dundee United scoring in the game, to be honest. You know, I thought we'd go the storm out well. But it's just well, one of the things, eh? Because well, they had a few chances. Like I know what you mean. Like, like later on, you never seen them because you thought maybe the, the time had the had kind of rode the storm. Because your man was, was it Johnny Russell that mm-hmm. uh, put his ball aye. through it and put it across aye. the bar. Aye. 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 The one that just went past the post as well. Like, I mean, they, they, they did have about two or three chances, and, and of course they're going to get the chances. But uh, two now with three minutes to go, you should be seeing the game. Like, to be honest. And, and, and see again, Harper. It's like last. Well, you got to see fair play to Dundee United. Because see, when mm-hmm. we went when we went 2 0 up, I'd bet Celtic to win 5 0. I'd say the last week, so I says, I'm going to have a couple of quid in that. So I, I, I'm thinking 2 0. If we get another quick one, I've got a chance of this 5 0 here. Because most yeah. teams, they chuck the towel in, but they stuck by it and fair play. Then we've got to take our hats off. 2 uh, 0, we looked like scoring a third and maybe a yeah. fourth. We did look like that, uh, like the first the, the five, ten minutes after, we, we got the second goal. Like, but yeah. uh, I, I kind of disagree with Neil Lennon though his interview after the game when he says he thought we were absolutely brilliant um, uh, that we weren't anywhere near brilliant like, but we were, we were good in spells but Dungeon United were good in spells on reflection it's hard to take two each because it's the way the goal's going at the end and, and Jason I think that's a wee bit why Paddy might caught put so much stick as well because when it's losing two goals right at the end like that, somebody's got to be blamed do you know what I mean because people are just gone mad if you went in the Celtic minded do you know what I mean? People oh, are mad. A, people are just disgrace. people are mad that Paddy McCops. The, the most the most bizarre thing that I ever read is people are mad that he gets some of it. <laughs> How can you be mad about a Celtic player getting some of it? For Celtic fans, I just I don't understand that. But it's, it's McCops became one of the guys who Sam asked before him, Brown before him. Where something goes wrong, I mean, there's got to be somebody blamed, and he's he's at that. He's at that. He's the blame guy. He's the foul guy. And he's not got any game time at the minute, so you can't nah. expect the guy just to come in and just work miracles. No. Nah. You know, and I, I like Paddy, but what do you, I don't think he's amazing, but I like the guy. Uh, 
So, no, nah, I'm not going to blame him. It's just a freak result, and well, that's it. I, I, can, I understand everybody. Hey, I understand everybody liking Paddy McCourt because Paddy McCourt's a special player, right? But can you keep him anymore? Like? Aye. Well, well, you know, keeps putting them in the squad, keeps putting them on well, the well, squad. Is, is the club going to fall apart if we keep a Paddy McCourt? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... But well, you just ask, can we keep him? I was saying, but do, you, do we need him, Mick? Yeah, well, that's a different question altogether, but we can keep him. There's no problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different way to look at it, Joe. Is. Why, why do you think that Neil Lennon keeps putting him then? Well, is it because it's something that he's seen in training? Is it because he sees a, he's to try to find a specific role? I mean, I think uh, I've said he's, he's been used 65 times as a substitute now. And that's not obviously including starts as well. I mean, he's just a lot of time injured. I mean, he's obviously getting still get picked in the squad and he's coming on. I mean, Liam Liam Power, I never seen the command of the game. Liam Power, brummy boy, good friend of Jason's. He had him as man of the match in the command of the game. He only played the last 25 minutes on his blog last week. But you know, I mean, the fact, the, the thing that got me at the end when I went on Celtic Mind, everybody's got mad at Paddy McCourt, right? <laughs> They're stuttering league form, uh, dropping 12 points since the start of the season. That's not what they with Paddy McCourt. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean but okay, okay, we're going to tell this. I think the other thing as well is when you're looking at the season, and it's not been a great league start, but I think it's the exact same start we had last season. Somebody was saying, I think they're only a point mm-hmm. different from this time last season. So, I think, listen, to be honest, I just think it's all about Europe, man. Uh, Jan Venegur Hestling said something very interesting, I thought, in the, in the, when he was in the studio. Uh, he, said, he said something about, uh, even when he was at Celtic, and he says, and this is something we go back to before when you talk about the, the mental thing, and it just, and it, you're only human, and it's hard to keep switched on. And even Jan Venegur Hestling says, when he was at Celtic, once you were 2 3 0 up in a game, he did start to think about the big European game coming midweek. And you did start mm. to think about, I'm not what he'd injured for that, or I'm not what he... Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, I don't know if there is a case of that. Well, he's... Jan Venegur, he has been playing a pretty good Celtic team, he's a pretty good player himself. He said he'd done it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's only natural. Like, so maybe that's something that we've really got to guard against players' minds, maybe just switching off that tiny wee bit mm. in the, the, the later stages of games. Do you know what? No, I start, I start, I found quite incredible that I hadn't even thought about. I was at, I've been at every game as well. But uh, we've only scored six goals at home in the Premier League this season. Mm. How many games? My boss, we about six, is it? <laughs> I will be there because uh, everybody have. Aye. Aye, six games. So we've only. I think, I mean, sorry, Paul, on you go. No, I was just going to say, I think if we're honest, as fans, we've, we've switched off for a bit as well. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you, you, you mentioned last season half the same start. We were also in Europe last season, six games. You know what I mean? So it's it's comparable. We've had the same start, we're in Europe, etc. As fans, we've switched off as well. Commandment game was awful. Everybody said crap and all that. If that had been two or three years ago, people would have been fighting with each other after that game. And people just yeah. changed. Ah, oh, well, it's all right. We'll win the league and all that kind of thing. So, you know. Whilst it's making for a mere competitive league and all that kind of thing, and as we said before, there's absolutely no way Peter Lowell wants to win the league by 20 points in January. You know, as fans, we need to take the responsibility as well and say, you know, we need to be fighting for it as, as much as the players do, you know, because if you're asking the players not to switch off, then we can't switch off. And especially at home games, the fans do switch off, including myself. You know what I mean? I, I'll switch off during games that it's, uh, you know, I, it's like the Commander game. I turned up at Felix Bacon and Celtic to win convincingly and we were con- well beat. So it's down to me as a fan and everybody else as a fan to make sure that we're as up for it as the players. And you know what? The players will probably respond to that a lot better. Yeah. I mean, with, with the exception of the Green Brigade, I mean, half of us are falling asleep at the games, you know, and it's, mm. you're right, Paul, we're, we're just taking things for granted because you've no get the challenge Mm. Uh, for the other Bob and you think we're going to win the league anyway because let's face it we've got better players than every other team in the league far better players than every can other can you imagine team. what the tone of this podcast would be if Sevco were in the league and were on 100% wins or something mm-hmm. <laughs> can oh, you yeah. imagine I know. Yeah, well, it would be, the same, be this last desk attitude like. no exactly it would be the same as last season when a lot of people um, were, were calling for Neil Lennon's head you know, I mean that—that's—that's that's the, the fickle nature of football fans. But I think that you know, if we were if we were putting in these performances in January and February, I'd be really concerned and I'd be I'd be pretty pissed off to be honest. But the now, you know, I'm willing to get the one eye on the European football thing a run until December. But after that, I certainly expect us to be winning nice if no all games. Do you know something else, Paul? That 
it's a wee bit different for this time last season, at the start of the season anyway, the, the European games were against Sion and the likes. We've seen this team play outstanding in Europe. Right. So we know the performances are there. So you're not overly concerned because you know, you've know you seen them. Yeah. It's not like we've been bad in the league. And, and we've still been quite good. I mean, I thought we were decent on Sunday. We played well. It's just It was one of the games. A couple of mistakes. It's cost us two goals. We, we've never played badly. But we've played really well in Europe. So we know the performances are there. And it's just about getting that consistency. Go on, Link. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and I think the majority of us feel that that will come from. Absolutely, yeah. I know, you've just got to put things into perspective. We're sitting top of the league, looking forward to playing at Barcelona <laughs> Wednesday night at Parkhead. Doesn't get any better, man, does it? We're sitting second in the group. We're well, we in the hand as well in the league, we shouldn't forget. Right, we're in the hand in the league, and it's just, it just doesn't get any better. I mean, I'm just I'm just including nine in it, man. You know, and it's like, I, because of the situation, the situation is what it is, because it is reality. So it's not as if we're making things up. We are sitting top of the league and we're sitting second top in a very healthy Champions League group. And we're looking forward to playing Barcelona Wednesday night at Parkhead. Just doesn't get any better than that. You know, it's just, you know, there's there's no need to feel bad. <laughs> and I'm not apologising for being cloud nine at the minute. So, nah, happy days. I guess game of the season for me is Inverness Cali at home in three weeks. Well, we're going to have to say. We're going to uh, well, we shift on. Thing. We shift on to Barcelona then. Right. Nice. He, he's nothing else to say about. Well, you, you said. You said. Sorry, I want to add. you said about uh, looks amazing, Tanadice. I've been there countless times, and it is. But I'll tell you one thing. See that main stand? You think you're in somebody's living room? <laughs> Honestly, see see when you get see when you pay the turnstile. Or you put hand your tick in at a turnstile. You can you you you're, you're climbing through box rooms and stuff like that. <laughs> and you, true. It's like step our boxes and that to get in. And there's only room for one person. You know, you see if there's a fire in there, God, I don't know how them do we get out. <laughs> you know, it's I have to say, Jason, it's always my favourite. Always my favourite. I mean, I loved Petodre way back when when we used to stand on the beach and remember uh, the yeah. benches and that. Yeah. But yeah. once they went to all seated and all that and then they, they put us in that other beach stand. Uh, for me, Tanner Dice is the best of each other, I'm out. Uh, I could not mind it. I've, I've got all the mates up in Lockheed, oh. so I'd go up there and have a fight with the guys up there. So, no, I enjoyed the day myself. And I'm, going, I'm going to go to Dens Park and box. Yeah. Yeah. We've, uh, we've been joined by a listener, St Sixtus. Paul, you there? Hello, can you hear me? You can't hear you, hey, indeed. Joe, somebody's got something on in the background, I can hear. So I'll drop you Paul, Paul, you'll need to turn, you'll need to turn the speaker down. You're list, you're, you've got this. All right, okay, okay. Hold on a wee second. Give me a wee second. Right, how's that? There you go. That's better. Is that better? No problem. I just wanted to floor up there. I think, bro. Well, I think you're giving the team a wee bit of an easier idea. Right. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucking absolutely shocking. Go ahead then, Paul. Absolutely shocking. And it's not the first time. Last week uh, against Gilmar, it was terrible and all. And it's, it's a, the attitude to that. Some of the players get out there, they play for us as a disgrace at times. And I think that's going to be picked up on. And I was I was doing the, the front row yesterday, right, right at the front row. And I, I was I was watching them. The apathy of the players at times was unbelievable to watch. Guys out there with Celtic strips. I was I was disgusted, just to be honest, disgusted. Who, who oh, would you like to... Well, for a start, we could, I don't know if it was Paul or if it was uh, you, Jason, that said that uh, uh, Miku is, is not got game time or he, he's, he's fucking shy. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you were willing to get I'm telling you, sorry, sorry for the line. What about the, the goal he scored? He's earning thousands of pounds playing for Celtic. He should be doing that regularly. Because he got a goal, he's all he was rotten, absolutely rotten. And Paddy McCourt is a mascot. That's all he is coming <laughs> over. Fucking uh, oh sorry, I'm, I'm <laughs> getting by he only gets eight minutes. You can't blame Paddy McCourt for <laughs> that. He knows for eight minutes. I think he'll be hearing us more time on the pitch than Paddy McCourt it's, does. Okay. He's still shite, but he's 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 not he's, he's he good. All he does is come he comes on for his eight minutes or for his fifteen minutes or for his twenty minutes sometimes. Not he does is lose the ball. Constantly. Somebody, Constantly. somebody who writes writes for, for us said he was man of the match against Kamana. 
I'm in this with that. I never seen the game like so I don't know. Aye, it's maybe I'm near man. Yeah, Paul Liam up on where? Yes, I mean, as far as I, I love it. I, I have a problem with the Paddy McCord fandom. I think, I think the sad thing is that Celtic, Celtic supporters that are Paddy McCord fans, right? Everybody wants to watch Paddy McCord play football because he's a special kind of player and he's entertaining, right? But nobody's getting to watch him play football. So we do I prefer him to go somewhere else where you keep an eye on him while he is playing football, while he's still in his prime as a football player, rather than so, keep him on our bench? I would say, Joe, the fact is with Paddy McCord, everybody knows him now. He's easily mapped to a game. All you, need to stand, all you need to do is stand close to him as a defender and he's not going to, he's not going to beat you. See, you don't I, 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 I agree. I don't think. I agree. I don't think Paddy McCourt's got that beating six or seven men, and I don't think that's what he's asked to do anymore either. I, I think Paddy McCourt has a, has a role. Um, if he was given the game time to, to play a to a Scottish sound daft, and I've been laughed at for saying before, but he could play a kind of holding midfield role, not even a holding midfield role, but a guy creating stuff in the middle of the park. That's, that's my opinion. He would. He Paddy would suit one of those roles. Do that role for fucking uh, Bristol Rovers or something. I keep hearing Barham Kyle, right? Barham Kyle keeps getting pa- pass marks because of his game time. How is that any different from another player in the squad? I think you, think I, you, get, you, get, you get more out of Barham Kyle, I'm afraid, than I mean. I, I think yeah. the, the reason Lenny put Paddy on, he was wanting Paddy to keep a hold of the ball. Exactly. You know, he, he was wanting Paddy to, because he, he can keep a hold of the boys. He wanted Paddy to take the ball and a run, keep a hold of it, and sort of use up some game time. I'm sure that was the tactics he was saying. And I wasn't unhappy with that. Obviously, it didn't turn out that way. But at the time, I was I wasn't very unhappy with that. Right, Jason, but he failed. Say, he I failed. Say, I wasn't. I'm not. Paddy McCourt is a, a side issue. Just because we you, we always talk about Paddy McCourt, that's right. a side issue. There was about seven or eight players out there yesterday that were absolutely disgraceful. I mean, only only pass mark I would give the Celtic team yesterday was Charlie McGrew. The only pass mark I would give. As a Geary, like, as a Geary uh, played well. Scott Brown, as a Geary, as a Geary, Geary Tony Watt. Aye, but he can't just... As a Geary gave my wee boy a high five coming off the park. So aye, like, I see, right, oh, so you were, you were in the wee fair play back in the front. Aye. 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 Would you want me using that language? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I was using that language, I could have stealed it. It's, 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 it's industrial language. I've got used to it, mate. Aye, no. uh, so well, I can see, I can see what you're saying, and obviously you were at the game. I wasn't up there yesterday, but I know, and you, you, you we're probably all going to carry the way because we're probably going to win the league, and you know, and you, you've, you've got a point. You know, you have got a point. I know, Jason. That's what I'm trying to say. We can't be putting up with these stuff. We're not, we're not going up there spending. A hundred pound each. I'm going to Celtic oh. Park and all that, and, and that's that's what they're getting us back. It's not good enough. Uh-huh. I know, man. If you're taking your laddie up there, you're a hundred pound. Then once you get a couple of pints, some to eat, a program, and whatever, it's a hundred quid when you've paid a couple of bus fares and two tickets. Aye, no, definitely. We, no. We get three no. rolls and mince and a three barrels. So. <laughs> I think maybe the problem. The problem may be for us is like I mean. As fans, I suppose we're, we're becoming a bit passive and like, yeah, we drew against London United. Shouldn't have, should have won. We lost to Kilmarnock, and uh, and but in the back of our minds, we're all kind of going, "Ah, oh, but there's still Barcelona coming up." I mean, there's still Benfica, and there's still Spartak Moscow. Do you reckon we're out, we're outweighing the bad uh, performances with the likes of Barcelona coming in Champions League football? Are we kind of making ourselves look on the bright side? Well, it comes yep. back to what I said, Joe. The, the performances in Europe have been have been excellent. You know, the performances are there, and like the, the, the games will eventually. Come round to the league games. I don't think this is. I, don't, I certainly don't think we were as bad as uh, Mister Sixtus said. Sixtus said we were on Sunday. I, I wasn't. I didn't get that for the game at all. Like, in fact, the one player I thought who was honking, who's not even messaging, it was Chris Commons. I thought he had won his best I game. Didn't, I didn't. Terrible, and terrible. The, the thing about Commons is he's one of these guys. He's a wee bit like Samaras actually. When he when he when he's only going right from you, kind of know that it's, it's not going to be his day. When he's having a bad game, it's just there the whole game. See, to be um, fair, Dundee United, I think, had watched the game midweek because they get plenty of space in midweek and he ran riot. So they had men on him. You know, they identified that as obviously he could cause them a lot of damage. So, and I think we need to take our hats off to Dundee United. They played well. You know, they played well. They've been underachieving this season. And obviously, they've been, with Mackay Stevens has been injured. That's not been great for them. I just think, I think we need to take our hats off to them. They've, they've been playing well. I want to so, say one thing, I do want to agree with, with say, it feels weird calling you St. Sixtus. Call him Paul, for fuck's sake. Oh, Paul, <laughs> I, I never caught his name was Paul, but uh, I kind of, I, 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 I didn't completely agree about Miku, 
but of course I wouldn't say he's absolutely shite. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he scored a good goal, but and you can see there's, there's skill in there, and he's got talent. But he's got to have to really speed things up. Like he's, he's just right. seems laborious to me and slow to react to things. Even a ball going out for a foul, he's trotting away exactly. back to the game. Get turned around and get, get, get on it. He just doesn't seem switched on enough. I, 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 I just, see, to, see, to be honest with you, I actually think it's it's a culture shock to him. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's, it's a 90 mile an hour here and he's came to Spain where guys have got time in the ball and stuff like that, well, apart from you're playing Barcelona. But there's a totally different, there's a lot of ball retention and things like that, but we want things to happen. I think he'll come good. I think he's, he's, definitely, he's definitely got something about him. You know, he's a player and a half. And uh, here's hope. Is he the guy? Have we got the option to sign him, or is it Lasad, or what's the? We've signed Lasad, so we've got the option aye. to sign him. He's, he's on a year loan, aye. Year aye, loan. okay. Aye. Well, the way the, the way he finished that goal shows he's got real good quality. That, aye, that's, different that's, class, aye. I mean, that's not every striker does that, you know. No, I mean, look at Larson when he first came. Larson took a wee while to get into his groove. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened there. I'm not going to say Miku's going to do a little Larson, but. You know, that's everybody's go-to. Okay. That's everybody's go-to guy for. Well, what about that? <laughs> 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 exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, look at Bangor. I mean, look what happened to him after the game. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> what was it we call him there? The sheriff. The sheriff. <laughs> what was that? He, he, I can't even remember. He, uh, he scored again at the weekend. I don't know, my Aye. God. Oh, please, the saddles. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pirate game, that nickname. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So, anything, oh. else, anything else you want to bring up, Paul? Uh, no, I just want to have a wee rant, to be honest. So, we're, 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 to... We're, we're here for you, mate. That's... We're here for your counsellors. Just, <laughs> 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 just to uh, let you know, I've always been a bus of uh, friends of yours. Going for a battle with you. I, I, heard, I heard you get eight tickets for the Real Madrid game. <laughs> <laughs> What's he going? <laughs> Drum chapel number one. All oh, right, ah, uh, Rob. Aye. 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 <laughs> oh, Rab, see, to let the, the, all the listeners know, Rab's mum was a refugee for Guernica when uh, the Luftwaffe bombed it in the Spanish Civil War. And uh, his mum landed in Glasgow as a young kid with nothing. And obviously, she got brought up in Glasgow and then met his dad. And Rab's the offspring, so he's always kept his Basque heritage and goes over to see Athletic and takes me aiming across. So, aye, I, I've got all the time in the world for Rab, good guy. Right, lads, I'll link you to it. Thanks very much. Cheers, Paul. 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 Cheers, Paul.
winning against Barcelona at Celtic Park would be absolutely unbelievable. Even getting a point at Celtic Park, I think, would be unbelievable against Barcelona. You need to remember. Um, thought to you, Paul. What are your thoughts on the game? Oh, uh, who's it we're playing again? Um, nah, we'll win easy enough. I think, uh, you know, <laughs> they, they, played, they played above themselves the last time. You know, we were out of form. We'll get our top players back. We'll win comfortably 3 0. Nah, but like seriously, it. I think, um, you know, nothing to fear. They're coming to the most intimidating venue on the planet. There'll be 60,000 going bananas. The Green Brigade have got a great um, presentation going on before it. Um, everybody's up for it. You can hear it in everybody's voices. You can twirl and everybody and the fans and all that. And listen, um, it's not going to be easy. I don't expect us to go all out or change much for the first game. But we'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them and we'll give everything we've got. And we've got every chance of winning that game because... We've seen the, the best of Europe come to Celtic Park and leave with nothing, and there's no way that that can't happen again. Yeah. I'm yeah. kind of worried about this game on Wednesday, as in the, I feel more nervous about this game because, I, because I kind of expect us to have one of the big European nights at Celtic Park, because that's what it's, it's, uh, expects me to know. But I'm excited to see that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the game. I'm excited for it. But at the same time, I'm really, I'm really worried about just us opening up too much and just getting, and just getting taken apart. Like uh, that's something that really, really worries me. But I was kind, of, I was worried. I had the, the same thoughts before the first game because it's Barcelona. Do you know what I mean? They can take anybody apart. They can take far better teams than us apart. But I think it's just because it's a home game, and you kind of think if the players will push on, they'll come out a wee bit, and uh, maybe just leave us. A wee bit exposed. I don't know. I don't know. I hope not. But I'm really, really excited for the game. And of course, of course, we can win it. But I know we can beat anybody on our day itself to part. But I'm really excited, but really um, trepidatious. Is that a word? Trepidatious. I don't know how to put that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Need to go to dictionary corner for that one. <laughs> You're the author. You tell me. <laughs> uh, you're facing it with some trepidation. I think. Yes, I'm actually. I think just for any, like, you know, it's, it's the same again, is of course we could get taken apart, of course we could get, you know, our asses handed to us, but at the end of the day, you know, I don't think that Neil Lennon's city manager's got to go, right, okay, you know, let's just open it and just go and attack them. Um, and I think that we may see a similar game with the new camp, except when we get our chances, the crowd might ball them in a bit more and, and, and will us own to be a bit more disciplined when taking them, hopefully. Let's be honest, that the fact that you know you could be taken apart adds to the nervous excitement. Of course. Well, uh, aye, it's, it's, it's all set up to be a great night. It's, uh, I, just, I just think, well, first of all... It depends, sorry, just if I can add... Oh, sorry, Jason. On you go, mate. I'd, oh, I just wanted to add as well with my thoughts that a lot depends on who, what players are fit. Well, that's what I'm going to say. See, see if with the same choices for the first leg I'd play exactly the same team mm -hmm. I would definitely play exactly the same team that with that with, with it a shadow of a doubt I think our just starting that, 11 there yeah. who was this just for listeners just so we can debate it what was the starting 11 again well you had your normal four at the back you'd Lustig uh, Lustig and Azagiri get this right by the way <laughs> was, ah you'd Lustig and Azagiri as the full backs and you'd uh, Ambrose and Wilson in the middle then you'd five across the midfield you had Samaras you had Charlie Mulgrew, you had Scott Brown, Victor Winyama, and we had... Who else? Who was our midfielder? Charlie Mulgrew in the midfield. Ledley. Did Ledley start? Aye, did start. Ledley was the other one, you're right. So it was Ledley, and then you would Hooper up front. So you'd sort of Samaras playing on the left, sort of a roving roll, and then the rest were all just quite compact. But that that would be my... That would be my ideal starting starting eleven. Yeah. But what what I hope is, sorry, Paul, you touched on it there. Is let's see Celtic Park. The players are familiar with their surroundings. So I know Terry put it well the other night when he says a lot of different factors sort of add to the fact that we kind of keep hold of the ball, and it's the ability of Barcelona to close you down. It's the unfamiliar surroundings. It seems like a big intimidating arena, although it's maybe the parts possibly very similar in size to Celtic Park. But we're, we're, we're familiar in our surroundings and with the crowd behind us, it can work wonders for them. And I just, I just hope we put a good account of ourselves in there. I would, I would bite the hand off you for one now. To us. And I think it's possible. You know, I really, really think it's possible. But uh, they Barcelona defenders, they're no great. 
and see if we can get on top of them. I could see them make a few mistakes. They can be mm. got at. And Charlie Mulgrew, I'm, I, again, we've said before that where do you play him in the park? But I don't care where you play him against teams at Barcelona because his dead ball delivery for us is vital. We need to get wide and we need to get fouls and we need to get free kicks because that's the best chance we've got to score. Him. Even if the corner kicks, if anywhere we get out wide, just fall, just try and get a foul and uh, I, just I get that off. I would rather have him in the box for corners. And maybe Commons taking the corner kicks. I think Tyler Mulgrews is a good attacker of the ball. And the ball Com- Commons, at Commons isn't going to be playing if I've got my, my first 11 out there. You know, Commons is a bit of luxury for mm. me. Mm. I, I think one of the things you really need Mulgrews in the team for is a diagonal boy, please. Mm. Especially if Samaras is playing. Because as Jason said, you can get that defence. And I want to see Mascarano getting dragged out of that box. Because Samaras had the beating of the defence the first game. It's last it's week. Aye, uh, and it's it. And this, effectively, um, what you're needing is good delivery. And Charlie's a man, diagonal boss. Spread them in the midfield and get diagonal boss to Samaras. Drag them out and have Hooper running off them. And I think you've got a good chance. You've got to get your man in the to get a boot in the balls this time. He's got away with it last time. <laughs> <laughs> a boot anywhere, a boot in the ankle. Just get I mean, I tell you what I would expect first and foremost. I think Barcelona will come all out of us in the first 20 minutes. Aye. Because they'll know, they know that crowd. If it starts to get gone, as 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 an extra man for Celtic, they know that they want to go and silence it. They want to put us on the back foot quickly. They want to get their goal and then go and just play around us and all that kind of thing. They'll be worried if they go to twenty minutes because the tactic you see like in these games, you know, pretty much as Gordon Strachan took over was had it till about sixty minutes, then go and attack them, and that worked against Man United. It worked against DC Milan and Barcelona. will know that you know they'll, they'll be back and they'll, I think they'll come all out to go and score a goal in the first twenty minutes against us. Yep. But the, the different animal we're waiting on this day. No, I've got, I, I can't wait. I, I absolutely can't wait. And obviously, we could get beat 5 0. You know, this this team's capable mm. of beating MD in the world 5 0. You know, they've done it with Real Madrid. They can certainly do it with us. But just. I just hope. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. What are you laughing at? Josh Gaffney's picture. What has gone on, man? What? What? Josh Gaffney tweeted his picture there at quarter to eight, his progress for his November. Sorry for buttoning. Christ, uh, I can see it now. Uh, odd. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's Adolf Hitler when he was 19. Aye, man. That is, that, what has happened with the hair? Let's see, Harold and Twitter. Aye. I'll, I'll, uh... I'll retweet that. I'll retweet that. I, I should see it in my timeline. This is a belter. I'm <laughs> tweeting it now. Gaffney, mm. I know you're in the chat room, son. What's going on, man? He's got the Hitler tash and the Hitler sideburn slick. It's like his <laughs> old bro cream. Jesus <laughs> Christ. It's a young, <laughs> young chubby face, Woostick. I tell you what, I'd love to see the dead body that's behind that door. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I just couldn't hold that laughing. It was just one of the spontaneous things. Ah, <laughs> uh, here, no mercy on this show. Right, anyway, so Jason, you were all about Barcelona there. Ah, say, it's, it's just, I just can't wait. And obviously, we're going to go into the Green Brigade later on, but uh, they've obviously got one of the, a, an amazing display sort of set up for a full stadium display. So everybody's got to get in, get in early enough and don't raise them up when you'll never walk alone. So wait till the team come out. And we've got to take the lead for the Green Brigade. They're going to go do it first in section 111, one, one, the corner. And then we've all just got to take the lead. So I'm really looking forward to that. I'm dying just, to see this. Does that, anybody know what it is? Just to read out the, the Green Brigade statement for anybody that was on the, the forum. So I'm on the, the forum. Mate. It says, on the 7th of November, 125 years and one day from Celtic's founding meeting in St Mary's and Carlton, we take on Barcelona in the Champions League. With brilliant financial backing from the Celtic support, we have organised a fantastic full stadium display to mark the occasion and celebrate our incredible history. And we need every fan... Oh, something's phoning me. And we need every fan to play their part in making that a success. For that to happen, we need everyone to make a big effort to get in early and to follow in these instructions. Do not raise the material at your seat during your night. Never walk alone. Instead, wait for the queue from Green Brigade calling at section 111 to do so before the teams come out. With your continued support, we can, 100, 125 years on from the founding of our club, continue to show the world just what the great Celtic support can do. Signed off the Green Brigade. And I can't wait to see this. I can't, I'm dying to see this. It's 
It's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic. And yeah. spot, I mean, can you imagine the kind of lift you'll get coming out of the tunnel, and boom, right in front of you, just this thing appears, whatever it's gonna be. Mm. Imagine what kind of buzz it's gonna give you. Yeah. I know it's uh, actually it's like the if you remember the first time we played them in uh, two thousand and four was I think one or two days after the uh, Madrid train bomb, and there was a lot of kind of emotion in that, and they played you'll never walk alone. And the two teams lined up, and after the game, Mialbi said that he could see some of the Barcelona players actually physically shrinking when they'll never walk alone was played because he's just never experienced anything like it. And I just hope that's the kind of atmosphere we're going to have eh, on Wednesday at Celtic Park. And I'm, I mean, it's, I've even seen some of these people saying, you know, oh no, why should we be able to Green Brigade say? Because they're the ones that are bringing the atmosphere. That's why, you know, yeah. whatever they want to do, we should just follow. Yeah. And they're not, that, they're, they're not doing it for, like, you know, notoriety, they're doing it because. They want to help the team and they want to show the fans and they want to show the world and they want to be a representation of the club that everybody can go, look at that. That's see the, the that's people that that. They're the same people who have done it like part of the club. <laughs> people are saying that. It's the same people that don't like life. Yeah. Mm. Exactly. You know, they just, just want to moan about stuff. There's a guy, I hope this guy's sitting next to me. He was, at, he was sitting next to me at the Benfica game. I lost a rag with him. Oh, my God. Ever miss your shite year this year, blah. And see, you go to about 10 minutes before half time, I just blew up. And he's in one of the seats my kids normally sit in, but they've got the, obviously the kids' season tickets, they don't go to the Champions League games. And I was just like, pal, I says, look, you better pass off me here. We're here to support Celtic. They're playing a quality side. Give the guys a break and get behind them. Oh, I can I pay my money. I can do it. I says, listen, you know, <laughs> there's no the time, just shut it. But uh, I can imagine them going, that's shite, Selig. No, you lost the body Javi or any yesterday. That's shite. Oh, come on, Fal. <laughs> I think some people take take the opportunity of football just to unleash as much of their anger as they possibly can. Right. You know I, mean? Like, I mean, see, we've spoken about this, me and Harper on the Mets boys and stuff like that. But see, if you support a football team, you support them and you want them to do well. So see, by shouting their shite and moaning all the time, is that going to make them play any better? You know, it's just, say, come on. And especially see a game like that, because see when the Celtic fans get behind the team, especially in these Champions League nights, it can be electric. You know, the hairs in the back of your neck. And we take it for granted. See, because you've been going there all your life. You know, you, you take these European nights for granted and you just think that every stadium's like this. And, like, that's just what all football fans do, but it isn't it. You know, we've got, we've got one special football arena there. And, uh, I mean, it just goes to show every player that comes and plays there because we're raving about the place. And when these Celtic fans get behind the team, it can produce magic. And the, the players, they can get an extra five yards, you know. And it's like, if you've got Samaras or something with the crowd behind them, and they, they get, he just he just comes in at his own in these nights. I mean, he's, he's born to play in big games. You know, he's totally won me over. Uh, I, I doubted him, and I must admit, and it's all down to Neil Lennon, as far as I'm concerned, because he's the guy that's turned him into a left winger or like a woven midfielder, because he came to us as a forward, and uh, he also identified very strong points. But these games, you're right half per earlier on, it's massive for us if he's fit. Massive. And yeah, we need Hooper to be fit as well, because he's a one world class striker. Yeah, we need they, yeah. they, they, they two, especially. Those two, Scott Brown, are, um, they're the biggest three players in that team at the moment. Wanyama, I'd say as well. And Wanyama, Wanyama, all right, four. Aye. I don't think you could count to four because you only see three chances earlier with four players. Fraser Foster. Fraser, five, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Calvin Wilson. There's a guy, uh, there's a guy, I'll, it's, the boy, it was a good few years ago, I, I won't name his name, online, <coughs> but uh, he actually says, uh, sitting in the boozer, years ago, that. Uh, when Didi Agath was playing brilliant for his mind, he just had that purple patch. He was up and doing that wing. And he says, Didi Agath was one of the top five players in the world. And there was a non-Celtic fan in the company. He turned around and went, you want to say that again? He says, aye. He says, as far as I'm concerned, Didi Agath's one of the top five players in the world. And the guy says, so he's better than Larson. He says, no, he's no better than Larson. So the guy says, so Celtic will get two of the top five players <laughs> in the world. And he thought about that for a minute and then went, aye. Tell you that, even who it was. <laughs> what is the word on Samaras? Any word on Samaras? Can I speak? No, no other thing. I think if there's any any chance of him playing, it'll be playing. If you know what I mean, there'll be any, there'll be any late fitness test. If he can, if he can be on the park, we'll be on the park. That's my that's my thing, you know. I think so too. I think so. Let's hope he's uh, no doing a rock on his anyway. 
<laughs> but at the end of the day, if you're a football player, these are the games that you don't get many chances in your life to play in a game like this. Well, no, I mean, you're not going to say, oh, you know what, I think I might sit this one out, my leg isn't feeling too good. <laughs> <laughs> and I think Scott Brown as well, I mean, I don't think you'll be able to keep him away for the part. You know, he'll, he'll be there, I'm sure he will be there. I think Lenny would never let him play 90 minutes if there's any doubt of him making this. But doesn't it mean, like, for, for someone like maybe like you, Jason, you, Paul, who have probably spoken to a lot of football players and athletes, is that something that can change, can actually help you block out, you know, any injuries or pain? If you have a big carrot like that against Barcelona, you just, I mean, does, does your mind instantly go, I'm playing in this game and that's it? Uh, you know, that reminds me, that reminds me of Peter Grant. When they said he would, he would be out for months, and then he was playing Aye. the next game, playing a cup final against Edinburgh. He was, I think he, mm-hmm. I think he was saying he was doing the Clyde, dipping his ankle in the water. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because there was no way he was missing that game. And I think it is one of the things where you can get mind over matter, sort of I think, I think as well. Sorry, but see if you're like a top player, see if you're like a top player, and the manager wants you in. A lot of the managers will leave it up to the player and say, "You tell me if you're fat or not," because obviously they trust them. And a lot of these guys, they just want to play so much. But I think, I think once you're out there, adrenaline definitely kicks in. And with that, with that crowd behind you, I can definitely work miracles. I'm, I'm convinced there. Players want to play, don't they? I mean, that's it. I mean, remember uh, to drop a name, Bertie Old. I uh, met him uh, ten years ago, and he was telling a story about um, how Joe Steen used to say that um, if players were out there in two or three weeks, they, they actually started to believe they'd always be injured. So he always tried to get them in quick. And one of these particular instances was at Dens Park where Bertie had been over in his ankle week before and he wasn't feeling great, etc. And Big Joe says, Are you playing at Dens Park? And he says, Joe, he says, My ankle's all blown up now. He says, Listen, you're playing. So he was like, right, he didn't disagree with the big man up to Dens Park. And he said to Bobby Murdoch before the game, Listen, Bobby, I'm struggling here. He says, You know, did he pass it to me? Whatever you do, because I'm like, No, I'm hopeless here, like, you know. And Bobby says, don't worry, just every time you get the ball, get me Jinky and we'll be fine. Cut a long story short, Shelly won 8 1 and Jinky scored 5. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but no, I think, you know, mentally, I think, you know, a player will get anything. Especially, I mean, look, as we've said, I mean, look, you look at some of these guys, Ledley and Matthews have come through Cardiff and, you know, where Izzy's came and they've got come through, through lesser things and all that. Um, and, and here they are now, a week to play a game at Barcelona, you know. Um, I think most of them are going to need to shoot them to kind of stop them playing so I, I agree with what Harper says if Samaras is even 70% he'll be playing Can I, can I ask you one thing that, <clears throat> what, what was the idea of bringing Thomas Rogden there at the weekend and, and, and also on that because the one thing I think it's alright resting players and stuff like that right, and making sure players get games but the one thing I like to see as a sell back for playing week in week out I think Lennon really needs to make up his mind who his first choice right back is. And I think his first choice right back is Lustig, mm-hmm. um, which is maybe a wee bit fair in Adam Matthews because he's been, he's been pretty good. But if that's your back four, I, I just, I'd like to see that back four play every single game. All right, the League Cup, you can, you can put boys in for that, whatever. But I want to see that the same back four playing. And I, I, I didn't really know what the thinking was bringing, bringing Rocky was in at the weekend at all. Like, and for the, for the start, Lustig, because Lustig will start. Wednesday, have they done? Yes. My, I mean, my only opinion on it, or theory on it, is that he was brought in to combat John Daly at corners and set pieces. Because, I mean, I know John Daly's been playing centre half at uh, Dundee United recently and stuff, but you see him, he's, he's one of the best leaders of all in Scotland. It's pretty much the only thing he can do, to be honest. But that's the only thing I could think of. I, I totally agree with you, Harper. I think any manager will tell you the first thing you do is you build a defence, you keep it strong, you keep it the same, and then. We bowled for there, and I'm not overly keen on drunk defenders either, to be honest. Yeah. I, I just, I just think, see, because with a midweek cup game and stuff like that, and I don't know, just maybe try to rest them. If you've got an opportunity in a league game, in cup games, if you if you don't play well, you're out. But in a league game, I think maybe Lenny, Lenny knows the score. He's, we're not going to lose the league, I don't think. Famous last words, but I, I just think he's taken. As we all said at the start of the season, we've got an opportunity here to rest players if we're playing the Champions League. And it doesn't get much bigger than this. I just think he's he's took a chance. We're resting a few. And let's hope it pays off. And he has got that opportunity. You know, the sky hasn't fallen down because we drew with Dundee United. I mean, he still went back to the top of the league. 
So I just think we did say at the start of the season we're going to have that luxury, yeah. and he's he's making the best of it. You know, and if the team had won, we'd be thinking, ah, it was well done, Billy, and it was a masterstroke. Now we're sort of questioning it because two each, but I just think that's the reason why he's done it. That's my personal opinion that he's. Yeah. I'm. He's I'm. Just, I'm he's just took the chance. I'm. You no, just no, 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 no. I don't mean. I don't mean that half, but I'm just saying that's my personal opinion. The reason why he's done it. I reckon he could have pushed the boat out and played some of these players. I reckon he possibly have played Hooper and stuff like that if we were out of Europe. But uh, yeah, I just I think. I agree with what you're saying. I think that is the reasons he's done it. But I'm just saying for me, I'd rather, I'd rather just make look because Lister and Matthews are going to chop and change all the time. I think I would just rather stick my settled back forward. I don't, I don't think. Centre half need dressed, for instance. I just I would like to stick my centre back for a real, I really, really would. Yeah, Especially when Ambrose and Wilson are just kind of building that relationship. I think when you look at centre half, the amount of run the boot they did against Barcelona in the new camp, you know, and then but they've come back to a few games in a short space of time, and then playing Barcelona again. I just think I I think they took the chance to rest him. And Thomas Rodney, I think he was he must have been running the boot every day for a month, was he? He's not. He's not. <laughs> oh man, it's just he's. What do you do with that? I don't know. I don't know. It's it's, it's a shame for the boy because, as you say, Jason, a, there is a really good player in there. I think as well. And, uh, it just seems to be his question. He's just got to be one of these guys. Like. But do you know, I think that be a lot of them. It's his attitude. Do you know, I think he's got as you said, Paul. He maybe believes he gets injured more than he does. Yeah. Well, I tell you, there was there was one player at Celtic Park who. Um, Who's now left? Who, who Gordon Strachan definitely thought that that was a, a it was a problem it was psychological. It wasn't injuries, and this player had even stopped going to see the ANC like physio had started taking up facilities at the Scottish Rugby Union and stuff like that. I think it can happen because you know I, I'm a big believer in kind of sports psychology, and I believe that most oh, yeah. players who get get to that kind of level they're they're there because they're brilliant football players. They were by far the best team player in their school team, by far the best player in their boys club, by far the best player in the reserves they get to the first team. So then when they get to that level, it comes down to the psychological and the belief and the confidence. Some players, I mean, you hear about it all the time, players are brilliant in training, then they go to a park and you think, oh, these are that good. They're all good. And I think that uh, mentally is where they have to be strong, you know, especially playing for Celtic when you have to win every game and especially again playing against teams like Barcelona. Yeah. See, see, I mean, my dad, my dad was best mates with Tommy Gemmell growing up and they played the same fit and stuff like that. And my dad says he wasn't even that good. And he says he just mm. wasn't, he? and he says he says Celtic scouts were watching the team one day, and he says he had the best game of his life, and they signed him. But I says he became amazing, you know. But he says he wasn't, he? but he says he always stuck in, you know, and he was always dedicated. Mm. But he just says with the right training and stuff like that, and a bit of belief. I just think, see if you've got a bit of belief, and I think guys like Martin O'Neill, I know he's been castrated with his performance at Sunderland and stuff like that, but you've got guys, and there's been a few articles and a few Celtic sites wrote about Martin O'Neill, and I, I, I kind of agree with them, but see when you've got guys that can get climb inside your head and make you believe you're better than what you are, it's only mm-hmm. going to have a positive effect on you. And if you firmly believe you're the best player, player in the world, even if, not, even if you're not, but you're dedicated and you believe you are, then you've got half a chance... If you believe yeah, I read, that. Yeah, I read uh, recently Gary Neville's book. Who's Titan? That's, that's the pirate coming in. Mm-hmm. And Gary <laughs> Neville said that, you know, his brother Philip was always a better player than him, always a better cricketer than him, always a better athlete than him. And, he, and through his youth, they were kind of competing, you know, and he was always living in his shadow. And he said that's what drove him on. And he said, I knew my, limit, my ability was limited, but I, so I knew I had to work even harder than normal. And yep. look at the career he ended up having. Uh-huh. I know it's it's definitely if you build if you if you if you play the game the right way and I mean by training you love your life the right way and you've got self belief and obviously you have to have core ability as well you can't be a total donkey you know I could I could have had all that belief and I still wouldn't have been any good but if you've got if you've got core ability and then you've got all the factors that you stick in you've got you've got a hell of a chance of making it and as long as you're dedicated and you stick with it. And I think it's testament. See guys like Charlie Mulgrew that's actually been released with Celtic. I just, I just feel see guys that's actually been it like a big team. They've been released and they've done the leagues or they've went to like a so-called lesser team and then they've worked their way back. I get nothing but respect for these guys because they've, they've they've never they've never sort of stopped believing in their own ability. No, and, uh, that's a wee bit like what happened to me, Jason. The Lost Boys had the Lost Boys had me on one of the early podcasts, right? And I was never asked back. And I thought, pff, I just fall on. I got Joe, and we started up the Homeboys, and look what, look what I've become. 
How are you doing, mate? You end up with nothing like me. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, can I ask you a question? Ask me a question. You've been a wee bit quiet. So Daniel Dooley in the chat room says, Kyle seems to have come down the peck order as well. Strange he never featured against the Arabs. Thoughts on Kyle? What's the situation here? Because he's been back for injury a wee while now, but he's not really getting the game time. Maybe the fact that they were called the Arabs, he was a bit offended, I don't know. <laughs> hey, hey, why? He is an Arab. He is an Arab. That's what, that's what, that's what, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. Right, hey. explain then, because I think you've made a total James Hunt to this. No, 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 no. He's ready to pounce on anything these days. He is, absolutely. Right. Jesus, you're a vulture. <laughs> if he's going in there going, I can't play against my own people, I'll have to sit this one out. <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant, Jason. Uh, yeah, I, I, know, here, I, I knew, I know he's an Arab. He's an Israeli Arab. Aye, I just mean, that's fine. You don't get there every day. So anyway, what is your opinion then? Of Kyle? Uh, the minute, what's, do, you think, do you think that uh, Lennon doesn't play fancy him or he's just, uh, he's just waiting for his chance? Or? I just think, I think the other midfielders are just, are just giving that bit, that bit more. Mm. I, mean, I, th- I think, I think that my, Scott Brown, Joe Ledley, and Wanyama, even Chris Commons to the degree, they're giving a lot more than Kyle gives. And I, well, not a lot more, sorry. They're probably giving marginally more than Kyle gives. They're probably offering more on the pitch. When you mention those players, it's hard to think about leaving one of them out for Kyle. At the minute. Exactly. So that, that's, your, that's his problem at the minute, you know? Yeah. So I think. He's a good player, but he could yeah. do better, I think. You know, I like the fact that he's... He could always do better, as Jason said last week. <laughs> that's it. And uh, somebody else asked a question, and I'll ask you, Jason. T P T T Pound T Pound M P says, "Am I the only person who's quite happy that Izzy is not available for selection from the Barcelona game?" Is he not available? Has that been confirmed? I don't know if that's confirmed or he's just amazing. But I didn't hear that. Now I'm just going. To ah, if that's the case, I'm definitely not happy. I want to be playing. I think he's just turned back to form, and I, I, I right. hate the guy. So. I've been really happy. I was gutted when he sort of lost his form, and I actually sort of semi gave up on him, and then he sort of came back with a bang. So no, I really want as a gear to play. So hopefully he can play. So I don't know where he's heard that. It's been confirmed. I've not read that anywhere. Apart, yeah, from, it's apart, confirmed. apart from giving the penalty away in uh, against Kilmarnock, he's been in good form. Like, no. Aye, so I, I think he has, and he's he's getting his mojo back, and he's up and down that wing, and uh, even against Dundee United, did that shot, I and mean, it's not a normal for him, but uh, he's great run. But obviously, Aye. that's that's what's maybe done his hamstring or whatever it was. Just right nah, here. Nah, I want him to play. I want him to play. He's a uh, he's our best in that position anyway. I'm just reading here that Gerald Gerard PK might be fit to play Celtic. I heard that the weekend as well. I hate that guy. I don't know why. I just hate him. I don't think he's uh, even. Do you know when they talk about Barcelona having their centre halves? So their centre halves are they're, they're still the no, 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 they're not the greatest centre halves in the world. Defensively, I still don't think like I still think you can get them at them even with him in the team. Like, I would, right. think is, even their defenders are an offensive option. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely. I but just I don't know. For what I've seen in him, even when he plays, I don't I don't think he's a, he's, a, he's an amazing centre half. He wasn't a great at Man United, was he? He wasn't that bad at Mind United. Oh, I don't think so. He, uh, isn't he having a kid with Shakira? What? He's having a kid with Shakira. Oh, I thought you said something in a foreign language. He had a kid with Shakira. Oh, he's having a kid with did Shakira. Then, did any see the article in the Scotsman about Barcelona? No. It was, uh, I mean, we're on about Sevco and stuff like that. But Barcelona, they're no paying tax and stuff like that. that Andrew Smith wrote an article. Uh, it was on Sunday. Yesterday, and uh, basically talking about Barcelona. Barcelona are 578 million in debt, and uh, they've, they've took out 155 million in emergency loans. They were took out in 2010. They've got 71 million negative equity, 48 million in unpaid tax owed, and then they've got 125 million three-year shirt spot, three-year shirt sponsorship deal with Qatari Foundation. 335 million debt is reported in Barcelona's 2011-12 accounts. And uh, so, do you know what I mean? Their, their salary is 298 million. Jesus. Jesus so, Christ. this is, I mean, we're we going about Sevco, but, I mean, is this not on a far wider scale? You know, we're, we're playing a team that's, I mean, this is, 
they were amazing to watch. What a fantastic football team, but they come at a price. I'll tell you, you what. Know, that that country's verging and collapse. If that's, I was just going to say, if that's the kind of financial advice that's been handed out to Spain, no wonder the country's on its knees. You know? That's ridiculous. And Real Madrid are potentially worse. They're paying their tax, but at the end of the day, we all know what happened with their training ground and stuff like that, and getting loans for the government, and obviously their government, I mean, val <laughs> sort of inflated valuations of training grounds and things like that, and giving them money like backhanders and things like that. You know, it's you know, corruption at the highest level. I mean, UEFA are obviously meant to be bringing this kind of stuff in to actually stop this, but will it happen? You know, the... I don't know. They're, they're too much of a flagship, Barca and Real Madrid. Yeah. And the Spanish government will do everything, and the Catalan government for Barca, but they'll do everything that they can to uh, keep these guys afloat, and they won't let them fail. That's what the Man City owner said when they put that um, financial fair clear rule, and he said, you need to watch it because the squad's completely balanced with it. And he just turned around and says, they'll never enforce it as long as Barcelona and Real Madrid are in the position they are. Aye. So they, that, that's man set I've got carte blanche to do what they want because they can just say, well, right. look at Barcelona. Mm -hmm. You know, and then one day, but at the end of the day, so we're all, we're lauding this team, uh, geniuses that are coming to Celtic Park, which they are, you know, they are geniuses. And it's probably one of the greatest collections of football players I've ever seen in my life. But let's face it, it's corrupt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's corrupt. We, we're living between our means, you know. But the team that Mark and Neil left us, I mean, that was... The wages they were earning was astronomical compared to Scottish football. I know Sepco, their old mob, had done that for years. But uh, it was ailing to us to pay that kind of money. And obviously, well, we had to balance the books. So, you know, and it's we had to sell and we had to change our business model. And we're living within our means now. And we're not seeing the blue chip signings, but we're seeing loads of quality players getting bought for sort of minimal fees, bringing them on and then obviously... Our, game plan is to sell them on at a, a huge profit hopefully and that's that's what we're playing against but then we're up playing this team whoever these lauding is this and mm. that I mean see the 578 million in debt and they're still, I, mean, I mean 298 million that's what their yearly salary is I mean 300 million euros a year and they're on about more, more than a club that's about 10 times our annual salary. Well, I think what they say about more than a club is that they know it's a pyramid scheme. Some <laughs> <laughs> Ponzi scheme, but it's in there. Ponzi, is it? Well, Ponzi should get there. I was just saying that, Jason. Uh, I just seen the best, uh, the most informed tweet in the, in the chat room yet. We said six this is still on a wee thing there. PK is a poofter. Can he hit the ball? Cash and carry Steve McCarroll. <laughs> you know why I don't like PK? I remember why I don't like PK. I seen a video of him after Bar after Barcelona won the European Cup. He was on an open top bus, and there was like kind of guys around helping out, and they were wearing like white sort of I don't know official T-shirts. They were helping out people. They were handing out water. I don't know. <clears throat> and one of them turned their back, and he spat on him, and somebody caught it on video, and he spat on him and laughed. And that's why I don't like him. I just remembered that. So. He sounds a right nice chap, eh? Yeah, so... Aye, <coughs> uh, so it's like... You know, it's... What, what do you... What do you do? It's just... It's... We're playing yeah, we do. You beat them on Wednesday night and you say, this is how it's done. Alright, let's, let's, let, let's look at all, all open scenarios, right? Let's look at first... If we get absolutely humped, right? Obviously, it's, it'd be embarrassing to, to lose badly on, on, on your own uh, ground. But are we going to be that worried about it in terms of qualifying? Is it going to be that big a blow? Oh, no, I mean, we, 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 if we get humped, we roll on to Lisbon and, and Jason and Liam will bring the three points back to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you we always said, <laughs> well, we always said uh, once we beat Moscow, we've got two free games now. Because let's face it, we budgeted at the start of the season. That's wasn't the inner. That's was the inner points on the board. You know, we sort of gave up the six points, but. I think we've got a chance. But if you look at the bookies, I don't know what price we are. I know we read out the odds last week. I don't know what price we are. In fact, I'll get the book. I don't know now, but I don't know what price will be, but we'll be at long odds, you know, but you never know. You never know. What's our, what's our record? You probably know this, Paul. What's our record against Barca? We get beat 3-2 with the Larson game. Uh, we beat them 1-0 with Alan Thompson. Yeah, and we lost 3-1 uh, when Larson actually scored against us. 
Oh, was it three one? I thought it was three aye. two. So three two, Silly Park when Big Yan and Barry Robson. Aye, Barry Robson scored. Aye, right, right, right. But also, let's not forget that Spartak Moscow could effectively put Benfica out tomorrow. Aye. Uh, oh, sorry, Wednesday. Um, you know, so there's something right away that we could be looking at saying, right, well, you know, can third place could be almost guaranteed, and Benfica becomes a different game tomorrow. You know what I mean? So. You know, there's, there's loads of ifs and buts and all that, but certainly I'm still looking at second place as, as a definite for Celtic. Like. Yeah, because when you actually think about it, if I know we're looking at the Spartak Barca game, but if if Spartak can go and beat Benfica, which is a big if, if they go and beat Benfica and then if Barcelona beat them, then we've got a, a final shootout no matter what happens to us in the Benfica game over there. We've mm-hmm. got a shootout with Spartak to get second place. If we beat Spartak at Celtic Park, we get through. Mm-hmm. That'd be amazing, that game. Jesus. Aye. You know, you so know so so Sorry, Steve. I'm a part of the parrots here. That's a parrot. I completely forgot all about you, parrots. Story of my life, mate. Story of my life. How are you doing, guys? I got, I, I, I got, I got carried away there. Apologies. How are you doing? Good. Celtic's 81 tomorrow night. Well, oh, sorry, Wednesday right? night from Mulgar Hill. Just get the odds right, up right. there. We've got, we've got 10, 10 to 1, we bet Victor. Uh, What's the best bet? Celtic, I think. 10 to 1's the best I can see there with bet Victor. So, uh, aye, there you go. Barcelona, 3 to 10, so they're 1 to 3 on. So let me see what other sort of bets we've got on the go. So that's just to win the game. Let's see, first goal scorer. First goal scorer odds. See what we've got here. Gary Hooper. Gary Hooper's best at uh, B1, 12 to 1 to score first. Uh, Miku 14s with Sky Bet. What are we? I don't kind of see Miku starting the game, but uh, what, who else are we looking at? Victor Winyama, you can get 33s with Tote Sport. Jason, I tell you, I, I, I don't know what Miku could start that game, by the way. If Aye, Aye, struggling at all, I think Miku could yeah. start that game. I ain't, I ain't, whole, I ain't, I ain't got experience no. against Barcelona, kind of thing. Like, mm. Aye, you could. Uh, where's Big? There's Big Sam and that's Charlie Mulgrew, uh, he's best 40s with B1. That's a great price, he's got a free kick, you know what I mean, Mulgrew, yep. It's uh, a great B5 on that one. Scott Brown's 40s as well. Uh, Scott Brown, because he, he was playing quite an advanced role at the new Camp, he was he was all over the shop by the start. But, uh, he'll take any penalties, will he? Or Sam and us, who'll take penalties? There's Big Sam and us. Can't see George. Oh, there he's there. Samaras is with B1, best price, 18 to 1. Ooh. 18 to 1 first goal. What did you get in the last? What did you get over in the new camp then? 20 to 1. 20, so 18 you can get with that B1. <coughs> What's it with Hills and stuff like that? Wally Hills, Skybet. Skybet is, is 11 to 1, 14 with Bet 365 or Tote Sport. Where's Wally Hills? William Hills. Ah, he's only 10 to 1. Stay out there. Corals, he's 8 to 1. Do that. So, uh, yep, that's yeah. it. It's our first yeah. goal. Yeah, I had a bad experience with bookies at the weekend. Wait, I'll tell you this, right? So, I lumped some money on Van Persie to score at any time in the Man U game, right? That came in, obviously, three minutes. I just went on the Sky Bet Live, lumped the winnings on um, Man United to win it 2 7. So, that came in, obviously. So, it was on a wee roll. So, I lumped everything on AC Milan to beat Kevo. They won 5 1. That was 1 2. So, it was 6 to odd quid. I can't remember what it was. Sitting pushed one o'clock in the morning, find out I'll double my money again, eh? Some some game in Brazil, I couldn't even pronounce it. <laughs> couldn't even pronounce the two teams, eh? Ten minutes to go. Nil nil. Uh five five to four uh on the draw. Loved to hear a lot on eh. Two minutes to go, one of them scored. Ah oh, my god, I was sick. See the next day when I woke up, put my sad and never put that bell on sober like this one of them. Oh and I lost a score on that Amazon bit in the Breeders' Cup. I'm sure I, I, there's something in the chat saying, I bought this arm a zombie. I was telling everybody on Twitter, back this, back this. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't even get placed. Jesus. So, Pat, Pat, what's the crack? What's your, what's your uh, Russian salad? It's been picked up for us <laughs> the last couple of days. I tell you what, I'm absolutely ashamed to be part Scottish with that Dundee police force yesterday. Dundee casuals everywhere, the coppers didn't they want to wait about it. Thank God Pope Paul was with me after the game. Absolute chaos. No, they, they just looking forward to a really good week for the club, actually. Aye. Um, they, they scooped around at all. No, I'm going to get some... One of the boys I went to the game with yesterday was up at Barcelona, scarf and all that. I can't, 
Oh, the last time I borrowed the name is when Maradona played with him. Uh-huh. I know you've got. I know you've got different beliefs. We, um, we, Davey was asking for you actually. I mentioned you last night, the Boozer and Birds, and uh, you were known as the Bow Bow Nutcase. <laughs> 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 That's a good one. No, um, just you know, obviously talking talking about the, the game yesterday and Barcelona and all that. It's just it's a fantastic thing for the club. I'm just really looking forward to tomorrow night and. The game we need to win. I don't even. I might even stack a five on Paddy the court scoring at any time in Wednesday. That's the sort of mood I'm in. You know, I don't know what price we'll get for him. Stephen, are you going to the, the Celtic Graves thing tomorrow? I, uh, Jason, uh, Jason, uh, go Jimmy, get in touch with us, and, and I got my ticket very luckily on. Um, I got my ticket on uh, Mister McGrory's service when I was there with Paul last Saturday, baby. So yeah, I see. I've seen there's a tweet out that they're asking for folk to have their cameras and their mobile phones all turned off. There's enough of people that are going to be doing stuff. So, yeah, it may sound daft, but I'm actually more excited about tomorrow night than I'm at a game of football on Wednesday night. I think it's a, an iconic moment, you know? Oh, it's it's actually, been, anybody, I mean, I'm very jealous that the three of you got to that because yeah. that's something that you'll be able to look back on for the rest of your life. A very, very unique time in our history and a very, very unique event. And it's a tiny actually wait to see the. I know Celtic TV are getting the footage. I mean, I don't know if, that, if that's just... I take it that's going to be getting made available for everybody to watch, not just... I, I think that's streaming. exactly why uh, what scenes you see there are for about <coughs> phones or cameras and that, specifically for that reason, because it is going to be videoed as a, as a proper thing. Yeah, but I mean, is it going to be available for everybody to watch? Aye, just, it's going on the website, aye. 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 aye that's, I can't wait to see Honestly, I can't wait to see that. And you're... Uh, you can't... Put any words, see like Jim Blythe that comes on here. I mean, the work of that guy's put into this yeah. and all the other guys in the Celtic Grave Society. I mean, the day are club proud, you know, and it's just just normal supporters, and that's the beauty of the Celtic have got just normal supporters that put an astronomical amount of work in for this club and for us to provide a platform for us to actually share these um, magical experiences. And I can't wait for it tomorrow night. I wouldn't miss it for the world, you know. I just kind of cannot wait. And this is how like to Celtic to us. I know every, every club set of supporters think their club is more than a club, but it's because of events like this that we prove to the world that we are more than a club. You know, and uh, football teams move on and they all become corporate entities and stuff like that. But there is something about Celtic that we always stick by our beliefs and we always we always go back to our beliefs. And although it's like in a Catholic church and that was obviously the mean gem of this conversation, Celtic are open to anybody. You know, but we don't ever forget our roots. We don't ever forget where we were founded from. But it doesn't mean to say MD can support Celtic, MD for any creed, faith, colour, whatever, you know, and nationality. It doesn't matter. Anybody can come and watch Celtic and everybody's welcome to open arms. But you can't change history and that's where Celtic were formed and I think it's great that we're going to celebrate this tomorrow, a mass in the Calton where Celtic were formed and I wouldn't miss it for the world. I've got a beautiful uh, quote here that I just read for the current Archbishop of Glasgow who just simply says, The Celtic story is hugely romantic. A club founded by a Maris brother to alleviate the poverty of his people in the east end of Glasgow, which went on to become the premier football team in Europe less than a century later. It is good that on the anniversary of the date of that foundation, many of the most closely identified with the club gather where the whole thing started, St Mary's Church in Abercrombie Street, to remember the origins and raise funds for the poor of our own day through Mary's meals. Yeah. I know, fantastic. You know, it's just this is this is I just I just can't wait. You know, I just can't wait. And it's uh, as I say, all oh, thanks to Jim and the boys at the Celtic Graves for actually making this mm. possible for us all. But uh, no but an, an iconic moment for the club and then obviously the following night we go to play Barcelona. And then the Friday Christy Moore's playing the barrel lads doesn't get any better. Jesus Christ, well I'm not weak. Unbelievable. Just see, Lint, Lint is no different. Uh, <laughs> Mind you, you get plenty of drink before you go. Uh, Tony, Tony Cassidy. Barlands, you know, got a pint anyway. No, you do. He doesn't open the bar up the stairs. He opens it down the stairs. Oh, right. Tony yeah, Cassidy just mentioned there on the chat room that the uh, Celtic TV free view footage of uh, Jimmy McGrory commemoration is on Celtic TV website right now. Okay. If anybody wants Thank to go ahead and watch it. Yeah. Tony was Tony was tweeting a thing last night about a movie, a movie trailer for something to do with Mary's Meals, Paul. Do you, do you know much about that? I say just basically uh, a movie that Mary's Meals have done, just kind of putting into pictures the work the work that they do. Um, I mean, they um, certainly. I mean, I, the work they do is not just consigned to Scotland. I mean, one of the things they were supporting this year was the famine that happened in Sudan, 
Um, and the work they do is absolutely incredible. Um, the Phil O'Donnell work last year, that was the other charity that was supported, as, long as, the, as well as the British Heart Foundation. The, the Phil O'Donnell work was happens every year on the 29th of December. It uh, was also supporting Mary's Meals, and that was something that Phil uh, had took close to his heart as well. And so it's a fantastic organisation, and it's very much in the spirit of Celtic Football Club, and it's fantastic that they're benefiting you know, from tomorrow night. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So, what are you doing, Stephen? What time are you heading over at? Um, I've seen, I've seen them, they want everybody in as soon as possible. I mean, I'm, I'm going to go out to town and get a haircut and grab a couple of coffees, Jason. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, mean, I, 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 was at, I had to get the bus to Stoke yesterday. We went to that place, the hall, for a break and roll. You get nine bits of bacon on the roll and a mug of coffee. Fantastic. But I was in trying to get some baby bio for my moustache. I can't even go anything. I've been walking to the toilet and get a smiling coat. Baby bio. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've got, I've, I've got quite a serious note, but, but I don't want to soil the Celtic talk you now, so just at the end, if I, I'll put back up where I can stay on, just to make a, a, quite a valid point, I'm actually I think, for once qualified to mention. No, you just carry on, man, because we're an hour and a half in, and I, mean, I think we're, we're kind of done with it, pretty much the, the chat, hey, and oh, a few, I mean, oh, I've got, got a few, I've got, they, 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 just kind of jump the gun, a minute, I've got a few announcements as well, and a competition, a competition to read out tonight for our listeners. So, uh, no, but I, I've got a bit of stuff that's got to last about 20 minutes anyway, the announcements and stuff, so you carry on, brother. No, I mean, I, I was asked yesterday in the supporters first when I went up, um, discussing about, and somebody obviously went to me, oh, you worked for the Ministry of Defence for 23 years, you'll be wearing a poppy, and I said, the only poppy I wear is a white poppy. As much as my, my two granddads fought in the Second World War, I, 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 relate to the, um, I relate to the First World War and the Second World War, Anything after that, I'm not, not really interested in. I mean, as a merchant seaman, um, my mates are doing the march at the, um, the Albert Hall. If, if you were a merchant seaman during the Second World War, once your ship was torpedoed, the shipping company you worked for actually took note of that time and your wages were stopped as soon as you were in the water. Jeez. So, I um, did it think, you know, I mean, it's, it's quite a, it was one of the first organisations that Maggie Thatcher shut down, was the Merchant Navy, once she... Um, she got in power because it was too strong a union. It, it got guys like um, Mr. Two Jags in. He was a galley boy, he was a plate washer. And our union put him into university to, to become the, the, the identity he is. But it's just obviously we're, we're dear departed friends over the water. Um, I was a bit dis- disappointed today. People wanted to draw them in the Scottish Cup. To me, they're actually dead. You'll never play the game again. And the way they've, they've got 300 members of the Ministry of Defence <laughs> on the pitch on, on, at the weekend, my, my only thing to finish off would be, if any of you have seen the new James Bond movie. i seen it the other day, yeah. aye. Okay, well, there's three links of pack helicopters, I've been in them, and there's a Merlin helicopter. If, if the, late, the late Glasgow Rangers had paid their taxes, the British government would have those four vehicles to do relief work or whatever. That's the standard and the scale of how much they've robbed the British people out of money. Very good point. Yeah. Good point, mate, aye. Right? See, they put their daft displays up, stick their hand in their pocket and pay their bills. Definitely puts, yeah. it, in, puts it into perspective, doesn't it, really, yeah. you know? See, when you're talking poppies as well, I've seen Poppy Scotland, or whatever they're called, the Easter Statement they did, saying uh, they didn't know where all this stuff that Celtic had uh, refused them to have a bucket collection of Celtic Parker came from. It was absolute nonsense. And the Celtic have recently made a donation of 10,000 sterling. So, mm. just, just what we're talking about. See, see, see <coughs> my, my opinion of the poppy, see if it's Second World War and First World War. I mean, absolutely. I mean, they all guys, they deserve mm. whatever. I mean, that, I mean, that is, these guys were all sent out to die and stuff like that as a cause. Yeah. Everybody should remember, you know, absolutely. But it's been hijacked. It's been yeah, hijacked. It has been hijacked. Right? With these right wing fascists, and you know, and it's like you, you just say to yourself, and it's a fashion symbol now as well for every celebrity on the telly to be blazantly wearing one, you know, and you're like, what's going on? And they actually, you see them actually making Irish folk put them on in the telly, you know, if they're on British TV, they've got yeah. one pinned onto them. Well, like, oh, come on, you know, what's happening? I know he's not a, a show favourite with most of you guys, but I've seen Frankie Boyle with a wee poppy on at the weekend. Aye, good on him. I'm running run the toilet, lads. One second. Keep going. I actually, I actually walked past here in Drogheda on, uh, when I, I finished my overtime on Saturday and I came down and there's a war, a war memorial over there uh, just the other side of Dublin Road for me here and it's to, to Irishmen who fought 
in the world was, and um, the, well, they were all wearing poppies. Like. But yeah. you've got the Celtic player. I mean, I know he didn't play a competitive game, but um, as a goal, and he he's P one of Victoria Cross. Because yeah. there was plenty of Irish went for the first World War League. Uh, the second as well. I mean, there's the only the only Irish one ever to win a Victoria Cross was actually a Catholic for Falls Road uh, called John McGuinness. And Belfast uh, City Hall refused to recognise him and he ended up dying in some fleet in Coventry at 44 years of age, you know. And I, I do think it's wrong that it's been hijacked, hijacked because if you look at the First World War, um, which is where it comes from, you know, if, it was, if that was at that time now, I mean, the way that people joined up then was like the pub joined up the same regiment and you know, your whole family went in the same regiment, and you think about how horrible that is. Because chances are, if you get killed, all your mates will as well. You know, and everybody that was dear to you and stuff like that all goes as well. And there was never a true phrase said about that war, which was lines led by donkeys. You know. Yeah, and it's just the the shock after it. You know, obviously it was a great war, and after it for years and years and years, just people couldn't go over it. You know, the people suffering for all sorts and the amount of people that died, it's just incredible. And people in our, our generation, I mean, it was, I always mind one of the comedians says, the, you know, the older generation would always say, I've lived through like two wars and stuff for mm. that. And uh, our generation would say, oh, I've lived through a war as well and that, that Gulf War, I was up to four in the morning watching it on Sky, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and it's like, that's like our sort of generation. Yeah. And then you go back to looking at like, the international brigades and that, again, about fighting the Spanish Civil War as well, a war that essentially wasn't our own, but they took the cause to their heart. And you just can't comprehend and put into words the bravery of these guys, you know. Uh, yeah. and, See, I think that's a great point you make there, Jason. It wasn't their war, but they went anyway. Could you comprehend anybody now going to Bosnia or Afghanistan or flying back? You know, right. and they went and fought in a war just because they believed in it. They believed in the cause. Yeah. Totally different generation now. Oh, absolutely. And it's just to say this: thank you, Poppy. I've got utmost respect for all the old veterans in the Second World War and the First World War. But to me, the the current crop and the mm. you know, it's not for me. You know, this this celebrity poppy sort of stuff and all that I mean it's, it's definitely what it was set out to do at the start aye absolutely noble cause but I don't I, I just don't agree I would wear a white poppy myself I think it's the I think it's the force down your throat aspect of it that yep. people don't aye. like you know that's, I mean? that's what I used poppy to hate fascism I, mean, I hate that like, I mean, the, yeah, warrior poppy no problem I haven't got no problem with that wear a swastika I don't care I mean just don't make, don't tell me I have to wear it well, I care if I see somebody walk past me with a swastika. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I mean, the people people are afraid of what they want. I mean. No, I'm, 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 people are, but then they can they can be free to get a smack in the mouth as well. You're you're gonna go out there punching skinheads, eh? Good luck, man. <laughs> Aye, if you if you come in here with a skinhead tomorrow night with a swastika, I'll punch you. I must have that. I was walking through the streets, see a guy with a swastika. I would attempt to attack him myself. <laughs> but, uh, I, I get told one really funny story yesterday. One of one of the boys about up the bus on his uh, cousin used to play for Party Festival, Bobby Houston, and uh, the manager was barely old at the time. And he was saying that in the dressing room, Bertie was quite superstitious. The times, and I don't know if they still are, in the dressing room were red, yellow, and black. And he refused to to talk uh, to uh, go in and um, stand on a yellow, a red tile. So he'd be he'd be shouting at all the players at half time, giving them their, 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 their fifty pence worth sort of dangling between the tiles. But um, he was telling me the story about two uh, two ex Celtic players and thoughts that one of them's passed away now, Brian Whitaker. He was saying that uh, in the dressing room when Alan Ruff was playing and Brian Whitaker, and big Brian fancied himself supposedly as a bit of a ladies man, and he came in before the game and he was getting changed, and all the players looked and he had this leopard skin sort of silky forearm, and he said, I mean, bear in mind, this was early 80s, and he said to the players, he sort of looked at the players and went, oh yeah, my girlfriend's a model, she bought me this, it cost her £85 for Paris, and he says the players ran out onto the pitch, and in the middle of the first half, uh, Brian Whitaker passed a shot of medicine ball basically back to Alan Ruff and Ruff sort of had to dive and grab it and he said the two of them were like hammers and thongs with each other and Brian Whitaker went to run away and uh, Ruff went, oi Whitaker turned round and uh, Brian Whitaker turned round Alan Ruff lifted his shorts on and the bold Ruffy had stuck the left skin thong on <laughs> so that was it 
Brian Whitaker's running right up to me and they're, they're, they're basically not meh for each other <laughs> and on a official fan they're like ah, that's passion that's what we are that's how you're the best team in the league you know it was actually about a pair of, pair of underwear but that's about it just to lighten up a wee bit guys <laughs> unbelievable right now listen I've got a few announcements here now um, we'll come on in November because Jason I tell you, man, I'm very disappointed with one of your team members, but as the captain, I'm going to let you deal with this. Uh, all, I can do. all I've got written in my notes here is Joe is a cheat in capital letters, right? Well, we'll, come to that. we'll come to that. Um, <laughs> what? Uh, hell, hell, media announcements, right? I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting. Uh, we've been, the shop's been open a couple of weeks now, right? Uh, our bold IT man, the gaffer, the gaffney, uh, the young Hitler. <laughs> uh, he's designed a new logo that everybody can see there on the speaker and see it on the website but it's actually one of the t-shirts and it looks first class so there's Hail Hail Media t-shirts, mugs iPhone covers, hoodies women's stuff so, dogs, um, dogs dogs yeah. the, the price on them, everything is right it's the bare minimum plus one pound and that one pound is going to charity we've not decided what charity yet but any money we raise, we're selling it at cost as, as we spreadshirt, right? And we've just added a pound on the spreadshirt price, and that pound will, will be going to charity 100%. We'll be going to charity, so we won't be making any money off that. And I have to say, the t shirts look really, really nice with the big logo. And to get that, just go to hailhailmedia.com, and there's a big banner. You know, there's, you know, there's that uh, banner that changes three, three images, and you just hit that, and you'll get the link for the shop, and you'll see. Uh, Grey off beyond the waves, uh, dressed up as uh, what's your man with the arc? Noah. Aye, Noah. So there you go. And he's modelling man with the long sleeved uh, tops. Uh, the other thing about Hail Hail Media, right? You know how we've got that wee custom pre roll? We've got the wee pre roll at the start of the podcast. It says uh, you're listening to a speaker.com or whatever it is. Yes. Well, we can actually change that. We never knew this. <laughs> we only just discovered that our pricing plan that we can actually change that to a custom pre-roll. Now, the Gaffney, I don't know if you've seen it in our wee private forum, but he came up with one, so I need somebody else to come up with one because I'm not having that. He's putting on some, he's putting on one of the uh, voiceover man <laughs> voices, you know what I mean? Oh, like one of those, you mean it's him talking? It's, it goes with his moustache, put it that way. Right? Is, it one of those, is it one of those ones? In a world. I accept it, but high-pitched. If it's him talking, we need to get rid of it. Right, so <laughs> we're, we're going to have a wee competition, right? So anybody, if you want to become the voice of Hail Hail Media, right? You can become the voice. This is, there's no extra prize, right? But you will be the voice. Your voice will be heard before every single Hail Hail Media podcast. Can we not right? do this every week, though? We're changing every week. What? We're just changing every week or every two weeks. Get a new oh. one. Because uh, cause, uh, because we're that good at making up our own wee intros and everything every week, like, we're going to change this every week. Other people can do it, though. We're having a competition, right? I know. Some, somebody, right, somebody sent us in maximum 10 seconds in length and no copyright music in the background. And that's that you can have whatever you do, whatever you want. Whoever has the best one, we're going to put them, if we get a few entries, we'll put them up on the website. People, Gaffney's got a separate page. People can vote on what the one their favourite is, and that'll be the, the new introduction the hailhailmedia.com so it's going to have to be something like you're listening to a podcast the Hail Hail Media you know the sort of thing you've got 10 seconds so email your entries to hailhailmedia at gmail.com but it's to be Hail Hail Media it's not to be homeboys or to be beyond the Hail Hail Media I think you, need to, you need to do Harper is you need to provide the, the statement that they need to read no they could make up their own statement so whoever comes up the best one but as long as it mentions Hail Hail Media alright fair enough They've got scope to do whatever they want, but it can only be 10 seconds and no pop music, and it's something big, big Frankie or Mickey LaVigley, what did they do with it? <laughs> and if, if Nady comes up with anything good, Joe, you'll have to do it. I, I did, I did. Right, so that's that's all the Hill Media stuff. So, on to November. Right. Uh, this, just a wee update on our team so far. We're still, we're still kind of low key. But we're, 355 we're, quid. But I've got issues. Wait a minute. Globally, 11.4 million. That's outstanding after five days, isn't it? Yeah. Globally, 11.4 million. Canada leading the way, I have to say. Nay, thanks to seven slackers in our team. Right. Uh, Jason, 
Yes, and this is where I've got an issue, right? right. Uh, Mr. Mr. McKenna posted a picture on Facebook the other day saying November, day one or day two. Oh, or I day said, oh, no, 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 I wrote early but days in November. We can have your answer in a minute, right? You're paraphrasing me all wrong. Yesterday, right? You can, you can have, you'll get your reply, right? The just, um, we, 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 did, we did say no beards, right? Right. And Mr. McKenna is on a full chin and a moustache at the same time, so then it just so he'll know it's ridiculous, and then he can shave away the chin. No, no. That's, that's what he's at. He says the I'm, groomer will come later. Absolutely cheating, mate. It's not yeah. on. How is it cheating? You're not oh. allowed a beard. I'm Read gonna, the rules. I'm going to shave it now tonight when I get shard. Right, 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 okay. That's what you were saying to me yesterday. I do the captains here, eh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this guy said to me, what a day as well. Oh, Jason, you, you did not remember. I'm doing it as well. I'll look around. He just had a big face of stubble. I'm like, no, you're no. I'm like, oh, I've not shaved you. I'm like, it's day four. You need to. You need to groom. Okay, right, okay. Hands up then. I'll do it then tonight. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> no. Is that is that how you've got any money in you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still advertising. I'm scared. Yeah. Because it looks like I'm not doing it. No, Mr. Larkin and Callum McGregor and the team there, the pace setters, 55 quid each. Me and you, Harper, we're at 30 each. Tony Boyle, 45. Uh, Chris, Chris Kiawa, he's got 40. Excuse me, I'm at 35 now. Are you? It's I've just refreshed it and it's 30. That's not updated properly. Is uh, it the main page, because I got a five of the day for Jim Haddle, GMH 72, and I got a quid at the weekend for John Brown, it's a guy I work with, and Mary Claire uh, Fitzpatrick, as I said last week, donated me a five, so I'm up to 35. But I'm scared to ask anybody at the minute, because it just looks like I've had a piece on the gravy. <laughs> <laughs> so I just won't wipe my hand and it'd be away. Okay. So next week's when I'm going to start hitting them, once I'm in full mustard. That's what I'm going to say. Someone else. You might have not seen this tweet. I don't know if you follow this guy. He's got a kind of strange Twitter handle. His Twitter handle is Tiny Alley Cat G5. But his name is Brendan Tehan. Now Brendan says, "If all the phone boys, and I think he means, he means, he means between us four, right, post their pics after seven days, whoever has the best tash, in his opinion, he'll donate a tenner to." Okay. Okay. Right, so we'll make, for that. make that. Um, because uh, everybody needs to be with the football on that Wednesday night, so we'll say Thursday, right? Thursday, tea time, post your, yeah. post your pic. If you want, if I don't know if you follow, follow the guy, but if you want to send the pics to me, and I'll tweet the. I don't know if I can send four pics at the same time. I don't know. Anyway, we'll, we'll get the four pics. So Thursday tea time, and Tiny Alley Cat G Five will pick the best, and he's got to donate a tenner. So I think I'm out already in that link. So, but uh, I'll, I'll send the. Pic. Uh, one last announcement for me. More than 90 minutes, fanzine who are going to soon be one of our partners, I think. Uh, we're, we're going to be getting a, a full page advert in more than 90 minutes going forward. But we just missed this issue. issue. But Malish told me to say the issue number 74, the next issue, more than 90 minutes, will be available from uh, Saturday. The St. Johnson game. Is it Saturday? Sunday? Sunday. Sun Sunday will be available. Sunday. And uh, obviously the usual all good... Uh, news agents here in Ireland and in Scotland. Yeah, yeah. Is that a three o'clock kick off on Sunday, Paul? It is, I. I just thought it. Right. Cool. And just one last thing I wanted to say, I just looked in. Um, obviously, I want to give a shout out to our brothers and sisters in New York and or on the East Coast of America, especially like, say, Frankie and Nicky and I don't know, like Paul, but Charles Duffy and that and Liam and Rev and that and just the relief efforts for New York. So, uh, yeah. Just think of this moment in time when anybody or listeners are out there, all that kind of stuff. That's me, right. done. I think, uh, I, think, I think Manhattan's really getting power back today, is it? I think most of them. I think Rev's probably suffered the most. His place, Perth Amboy, was under four feet of water. Uh, in the street, so but I've got a nice wee segue there because I've got a wee shout out for uh, Charles Duffy's wee cousin Sean and his missus Darina, who had a lovely wee baby boy today, wee Shay O'Donnell, and he's a they already reckon he's going to be a future number seven for Celtic. So well done to you, Adrian. Thanks for okay. um, Norris, here, here. Another message here from somebody got to mention the Celtic Dream Show on Spreaker, normally on a Saturday night at seven till ten, but he's been doing Friday nights as well to keep troops happy with some music. So there you go. Do you want to listen to that? Go ahead. Uh, is how's he still doing the show? Uh, no, but I think uh, the guy from the Ryan's band uh, has been 
Daily Lodge show from here now. Just to mention again, Housey, I spoke to Housey at the weekend briefly. He's still doing all this stuff. We mentioned it last week, last Thursday. I said I'd keep mentioning it as long as we're doing November. We'll keep mentioning his fundraising efforts with his, with his new band. Um, oh my God, I can't remember what it's called. That's terrible. <laughs> but the, the charity is Beats, it beats for Beat. Oh. Beats to Beat Cancer, but the Our Little Life is the name of the band. I can't remember the name of the album. If you go on iTunes, it's 4 99 on iTunes. It's the cheapest place to buy it. And all the money goes to Cancer. Fair on. Right. I can't remember the name of the album. Southern Fires. <laughs> <laughs> but just, everybody, uh, Jason, you'll, you'll have seen this. Um, Probably this because you uh, it's a lot of delivery to get to the U Island. That. But any other American listeners in New York and New Jersey in that area, um, the, the, the Seven Line, Jason, you know, yep. that t shirts, they've, they've yep. brought shit that's really kind of captured the imagination. It's, it's really uh, it's been on television, uh, all it's like on the, the East Coast networks and that. And they brought a t shirt, uh, Unity, it's a black t shirt that says Unity across the front, and the N and the Y. Have been like emphasised in it, and they're red, obviously from New York, and and the, and the unity, it's white, black, and red T-shirt. And I can't remember what it says across the bottom. And all the money that he raises for that T-shirt is going towards the relief funds. And there's also a party on Saturday night. Anybody can go, and it's free beer, and you just make a wee donation. That's all going to the relief, the relief effort in New York and New Jersey. So, and what was the where was the the plug that the Rev and Graham gave? Uh, was it the US Red Cross or something like that? Uh, on the Beyond the Wave show, oh, I should have got the. If Emily's where I donate, you know, you mm. can send some donations there as well because these guys are in dire straits, you know. And Big Frankie, I've seen him post on Facebook about the guys in Queens, you know, all the relief efforts centered in Manhattan and they're forgetting the outer boroughs. I mean, Long Island, that's going to be without power for six weeks. Yeah. yeah. It's just you a know. disgrace. The same thing happened a couple of years ago. And it's uh, Michael Bloomberg, the mayor again, where. And we, and we got hit with 10 feet of snow, it was all this, come out, go to a Broadway show, everything's fine. We couldn't even get out our front door. And Big Frankie right. and all that in Queens was exactly the same. And, and, and as this Frankie calls him Little Lord Fauntleroy, what well, he cares about is Manhattan. If Manhattan gets his power back, everything's fine. And these poor people in northwest Queens, they're suffering every day when they power and stuff. So I know people that shouldn't forget that New York's more than one borough. They are, I know the Irish Centre up in McLean Avenue is uh, accepting like, food donations and uh, clothes donations. Mm. And there's... Distributing them out to, uh, I think it's mostly gone out to Coney Island. Yeah. So, I guess pe people have got issues with America because of their foreign policy and because of their government and things like that. But this is normal punters that are the exact same mm -hmm. as me and you that are stuck in Queens, you know. They've got absolutely nothing to do with America invading countries and things like that. They're just normal guys like us that's trying to make a better life for themselves, you know, and they're really, really struggling and it's a... A bit, the, the sad thing is Haiti get hit a lot worse and doesn't even hit the news do you know what I mean mm, yeah yeah. and uh, they you know but that's your media for you you know and it's it's nothing be, the only reason we're bringing up New York and these coast is we've got personal friends there so it's a, a subject close to our heart and obviously our hearts get it to everybody in Haiti and places like that as well mm -hmm. you know just reading there just, Chaz Duffy saying there's, there's another storm coming on Wednesday as well and it's a lot colder as well, seemingly, because the cold weather's starting to bite as well. Cause that's the odd thing with these hurricanes. Usually it becomes in the summer, you yeah. know, when it's warm. Seemingly it's the cold air that's energising these things at the minute. Right. blowing in, so that's what energised Sandy. So we'll pray for oil again. Uh -huh. I'm just reading here, the Ryan's Bar are doing a request show on Spreaker, raising money for sufferers of Hurricane Sandy on Friday night as well. I think that's from 10 till 2 a.m., 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. <laughs> I got another mention here from Mincy Heed. You give a plug to the Home Colonial Boys podcast on Friday night. I'm going to assume that's on Sprager, Mincy. Mincy, Mincy, that's 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 Tone Boys down under. That's Mincy. That's Paul. That's, mm. that's Paul. Who's going to pretend that? See, I'm terrible. See, I can never fill, put somebody up with their Twitter handle and their chat room handle to who they are in real life. You know what I mean? That's because he's Melbourne Tim. Melbourne Tim on Twitter. He's Mincy Heed and his emails in the chat room. He's got he's, a, he's got ah, yeah, it just, it just says espionage to me, just heading. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, are we all done? That's it. Just well, 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 a big number one. Oh, yes, I, yes, sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Paul. That's, How do you feel uh, about that, Paul? Well, I was actually, I mean, it's, I'll be honest, I couldn't even tell you how to find the charts on Amazon or Lulu. 
And it was actually Graham Wilson that played with him on Saturday that your book was number one. So I was kind of thinking, oh, well, you know, it's probably just that day or whatever. And then when I started to see some of the people that were beneath me, like Alec McDonald and Lego and Richard Gordon and that, I thought, well, here we go, I'm in it. And then, so I thought that might be kind of like a flash of fire, but know because eh, I was then told that Amazon updates their chart every hour. And I just thought about a game this morning, I looked at a game that was still number one, everybody was kind of moving a week, this kind of, I was like, Jesus Christ. And then, eh, today, Gaffer eh, quite a bit to me that was the number one in Wii as well. So I would just like to say thanks to everybody who's bought it. It's been absolutely fantastic. The feedback's been fantastic, really humbling comments. And, uh, you know, please try and keep us there because uh, this is by far and, uh, the best start I've ever had to a book. And, um, you know, for, after two years of writing stuff that only a few hundred people would read or whatever, to actually get sales now that's kind of like coming in with these numbers and that is really, really humbling and it's really, really inspiring. So if you've bought it, I thank you. And if you've not bought it, why not? For Christ's sake, it's great. Buy it. That's the power Even of the Jason's bought it for God's sake. That's I know. How That's how good yeah. it is. You can't get a any endorsement like that. Yeah, mind, I kept, I kept the box of them in here, and you said to me, just yeah. take a box. And I says, nah, you're all right. Take one. I says, nah, you're all right. But listen, <laughs> mate, have you, have, you got any, have you got any ballpark of the figures that you've sold? Or is it no, uh, confidential? Uh, it's not so much confidential. It's Amazon and, um, and Kindle give the reports kind of month to month. So... Right. Uh, all I know is that on the first day, because that was the last day of October, so that's the paper when you get a report, there was 58 ones, 58 copies downloaded on Kindle on the first day. So I don't know how many it takes to get to number one in these sections or anything like that. It's certainly no thousands upon thousands, like some people think. You know, I know it's you know you're dealing with these different sessions, football sessions and that. It's the, it's not you don't have to sell 5,000 copies to be number one or anything like. But certainly. Right. It's, it looks like it'll be uh, the best-selling book um, that I've ever put out, which is currently Poles and Bowls and Hesling. Paul, 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 did not play it down either, but because there's some there's some big-name books out there, if you know what I mean, that are below you. Oh, so aye. don't play it down either. You're, 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 you're doing well. Like. Yeah. The, the, the personal point of view, it's absolutely brilliant to be above Alec McDonald, you know, that tolerant yep. of individual, as, as well as Lego. But... From a kind of professional point of view, and I've known against the guy, I think the guy's a good guy, Richard Gordon. I find it incredible to be above him given the amount of publicity he gets throughout the mainstream media. He's got a weekly platform, he's got thousands, of thousands, 15,000 followers or whatever on Twitter. He's got all his mate journalists tweeting about it and stuff like that. So to be in that is a credit to the internet vampires who have went out there and bought it and stuff. And uh, as I say, it's really, really humbling. And it's, um, you know, I've been bringing out books again for two years now, and it feels like, you know, the closing of the circle. They're talking about it in a bar on 8th Avenue in December 2010 to be sitting number one at a couple of positions is, is absolutely fantastic. And you're right, Arthur, it's, it's actually, it's it's pretty emotional and it's pretty damn fantastic as well. I did say that, Green. But the thing is, I mean, it, it's, it, it's building, it, it's a real boost and a real build for what's coming up on November 24th as well. I mean, it, it's just kind, yeah. it just, it's just kind of puts the cork in the champagne, you know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. I mean, see, I mean, just a brief thing on the launch. Like, in the past, we've had launches at places, and Jason will verify this. <coughs> your ear nipped about this, your ear nipped about that, security this, day that, how many is coming, this, that, and thing. None of these things apply for the Sailor Club, right? The band will be the band. Pile in, the punters will pile in. We've got you know, 200 people on our list ready to pile in. They're tiny weight. I hope they all turn up. It'll be fantastic. And as you say, I hope it's a kind of culmination of everything. And I really hope that we take the roof off the place, not just for me personally, but for everybody that's going to be gone. Uh, all the homeboys are going to be there, the party's going to be there, the whole mystery here will be the family's going to be there, and that's going to be one of the, the special nights of my life, as far as I'm concerned. I you know what I was just thinking, see if we could get all the people like, together again on Sunday, we could record some on hell of a podcast. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Because Chris, Chris from the Lost Boys is going to be there, he's staying overnight. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we all, all four else are going to be there. The Carlin Shamrock boys are going to be there. Uh, KK, if the Paradise Report's going to be there. Gaffney's going to be there. The Parrot will be there. You should do that. It's like, it's, it's like a Hill Hill Media Hall of Fame. Hey, don't want, don't want you to record it that night. Oh, Richard will be there if they can look Shamrock. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be plenty of recording going you know, on. Don't you worry. <laughs> can, I, can I just say that? I'll have to get the same fake moustache. <laughs> Can I just say though, Paul, I, mean, I was in the social club on Dundee before and after the game and I, sh- I was actually sitting with some lads who were on the Dundee United uh, fan base for change and they were explaining how 
that they approached Thompson, the Dundee United chairman, about obviously the old local thing and what was going on. And they told him, Dundee United, no chance. This is what we want to do. And actually, I got my Kindle out and, well, my Kindle, my Kindle app on my iPhone, and I actually yeah. just let them read the back, the, like the back page of your book, what it's about, and they were all going home to buy it, mate. So it's not just, although it's primarily Celtic in your life story, the, the thing you've caught on with the referee stuff in there, I mean, uh, there, was a, there was a blog went out the other night mentioning the fact that Romanov reckons he's got evidence about uh, referees being on the payroll with a certain old deceased club. You're really getting out there, mate. You know, and congratulations, as you say. But I follow Richard Gordon. He's putting more spam out than I'm going to have in my pieces at the book launch, mate. You know what I mean? References <laughs> stuff. So well done, pal. Well, that's the thing. I mean, Richard Gordon he had a book launch at the Tawdry. He had most, if not all, the 1918 Cup Winners' Cup team. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, like, I'm having a book launch, which is in the Celtic Supporters Club, and I'm going to have all my band plots here. Uh, I'm even going to have Jason there, which is an honour. And uh, <laughs> that, but I, I wouldn't have it any other way. If you offered me the Lisbon Lines, it'd be great, but I would rather have the people. Because we think you know, these people, these books couldn't be written in, and I mean that honestly. And uh, I, I just need to add, obviously, I'd be a wee bit of two minutes or whatever to introduce <laughs> Paul on the stage. Well, this time, be, I reckon there'll be some other people getting introduced to come on the stage as well before the main man steps in. So, Joan Harper, beware. <laughs> Joe's good. <It's> like a... <laughs> hey, Joe's up. Joe's up first singing. Yep, straight away, Joe. As far as I know, I, I, I think I'm opening the night. Have you yes. bring your guitar uh, early? That's what I'm about to ask you, Paul. What? I'm, last if I was just... <laughs> I'm about to ask you, Paul. Is there going to be a guitar there? Aye. Uh, well, there's going to be a band there. I don't know if they'll be there at that time, but it shouldn't be that far off. I'll, I'll get you a guitar. Don't I don't fancy lo- lugging a guitar around Glasgow. I'll just hum. You sing. <laughs> oh, you just play the spoon, sir. You'd be uh, Tina. And I, you, well, get the, get the old paper and comb. Here, you go. You'd be Tina, and I'd be Ike, right? I'm going to gross, man. Gross. <laughs> well, I'll, go, I'll get some gross talk soon. We've been joined by uh, Graham. What do you mean we've been joined? I've got my bed. We've been joined by Graham's here from Beyond the Waves. Wants to come in and join the love. Oh. I'm not getting in bed with Harper. So you'd be so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> he's completely he's completely hair free he's like a monk <laughs> oh, I'm, so, I'm so disgusted <laughs> you, would, you, you would be if you see me naked <laughs> smooth all over smooth oh, all over the attack of the drunk pig <laughs> uh, hell hell boys uh, thanks for taking my call I heard you talking about the um, relief effort for uh, New York and I really appreciate you you mentioning that and I Mentioned on our show yesterday, the Red Cross site. Uh, Jason, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah. I tweeted a link to it. It's redcross.org. And if you'd like to visit, if any of the listeners would like to visit there, there's a button where you can click to donate. And, you know, anything that you can spare, you know, a fiver here or there, I mean, it, it really makes a difference. You know, like you said, they're calling for another storm to hit the East Coast. It's, it's not even going to be close to the level that, Sandy was, but you know, I, I heard the mayor of Hoboken talking earlier, where you know, even another inch of rain would you know, send the water back into a lot of people's homes. So it's it's sort of a, a touch and go situation, and you know, certainly uh, keep the prayers coming if you're religious and if you've been praying. It's uh, it's exactly what we didn't need, but uh, you know, we really appreciate uh, just just spreading the word and and trying to uh, to help out those who, who've been affected. It's just a lot of people, and it's just it's horrible. Yeah, well said, Graham. You know, I couldn't remember the link, mate, but uh, cheers for phoning up and confirming that. So, anybody that can spare a couple of quid, you know, I know we're always asking you to dig your hands in your pockets for good causes, but this is just normal people that's been put out of their houses and then the hardships they're going to suffer for years to come on the back of this is just, doesn't bear thinking about. Graham, can I just can I just ask someone as well, while you're on, like, because um, I've not listened back to the podcast yet, and uh, Jason was alluding to someone, Alluding to someone at the start of the show, can you follow them? The rev, rev came to the rescue. Come on, Grim. Oh yeah, no, I uh, I incorrectly stated. I think that Miku played. Uh, I think he was in goal for the six-two game. Throughout, <laughs> 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 so uh, I I was completely wrong there. And uh, credit to the rev for for setting me straight. That's it. We're, we're, all, we're all human, mate. We've all got folks. I'm just glad you've joined the club. <laughs> you're obviously, you're obviously, Jason, you're obviously just combing through podcasts. Yeah, 
the tick, tick tock, tick tock show a couple of weeks ago will get me right off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant, man. That was the simplest. Keep us straight. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> God, so, right. Right, oh, here, guys, so- I'm, going, I'm going to have to sign off. My wife's huffing and puffing here. Hang on a second, hang on a second. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? What, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Just shake your head in there. Hey, right. she's, 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 she's tell her for the shop and send her chickadees. Oh, is that what they call it these days? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, is that what you call it these days? I'll be bringing the chickadees in uh, three weeks' time. <laughs> we, have, we have some in red. <laughs> right, guys, I'm going to have to sign off, all right? Right, we're gone, are we? So they're gone. We're gone. All right, said. Thanks very much for listening, folks. We're going to play it with a song. Hopefully, Celtic can take uh, all three points on Wednesday night. Well, it's goodbye from me, Joe, and from Paul. Good night. Jason. Good night. Harper. A Reverend Dirtje. And Graham Wilson. Bye. All right, take it easy, guys. Who says bye? <laughs> have, a, have a nice day. <laughs> take it easy, guys. Take it easy. Hello, hello. All right. That's the magic number. Yes, it is. It's the magic number. Three. Somewhere in this hip hop soul community was born three. They still believe, and that's the magic number. What does it all mean? Difficult preaching is posthumous pleasure. Pleasure in preaching starts in the heart. Something that stimulates the music in a measure. Measure in the music raises three parts. Casually see, but don't do like the soul. Cause seeing and doing are actions for monkeys. Doing hip hop hustle, no rock and roll. Unless your name's Brewster, cause Brewster's a punk. Parents let go cause it's magic in the air. Criticizing rap, so you're out of order. Stop looking, listen to the phrase of Fred Astaire's. And don't get offended while Mace Dosi does your daughter. A dry camera roll system is now set. Fly around the store under Daisy Productions. It stands for the inner sound, y'all, in your Quebec. That the Actually not a trick, but show me the function. Everybody wants to be a DJ. Everybody wants to be an MC. But being speakers are the best. And you don't have to guess. Get our so posse consists of three, and that's the magic number. Three. This here piece of the pie is not dessert, but the cost that we got. And three out of every darn time, the effect is mmm with a daisy rose in your mind. Showing true position, this here piece is kissing the part of the pie that's missing. Where that negative number fills up the casualty. Maybe you can subtract it, you can call it your lucky partner, maybe you can call it your adjective. But odd as it may be, without my one and two, where would there be my three mates passing me? And that's the magic number. What does it all mean? Focus is formed by flaunt of the soul. Souls who form style gain praises by pounds. Comment on speakers who honor the scroll. Scroll written daily creates a new sound. Listeners listen cause this here is wisdom. Wisdom of a speaker, a dub and a plug. Set aside a legal substance to feed them for now. Get them high off this dialect drug. Time is a factor so it's time to count. Count not the negative actions of one. Speakers of soul say it's time to shout. Three forms the soul to a positive sum. Dance to this fix and flex every muscle. Space can be filled if you ride like my lumber. Advance to the tune but don't do the hustle. Shake Grad a roll to my magic number. Now you may try to subtract it, but it just won't go away. Three times one. What is it? One, two, three. That's a magic number.